come down. The devil is come down. Open it Matthew 13 and read verse 34, 35. All these things spake Yahushua unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. So when Yahushua was addressing, addressing the multitude, he was always speaking parables. As we're discovering throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's all deep parables and deep parables, mysteries. Pay attention, metaphors, similitudes, riddles. He said what he spake to them in a parable. There's a reason behind it. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the earth. That what he said, it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. That said what? He will utter things in parables. Open with David. David, let me go to Psalms chapter 25. Psalms 25. Psalm 25. And verse... Read verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his, co his covenant. He's going to show them what? His covenant. Because the secret of the Most with him, of the Most High is with them that fear him. What is Psalm 78 and verse 2? His secret is them that when they mean to fear him, keep your commandments. He will reveal his secrets to them. Psalm 78 and verse 2. I read verse 1 and 2. Give ear, O my people, to my law. David saying, listen to the law. Listen to the law. Give ear to the law. Understanding. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. And I will open my mouth in a parable. Most I say I will open my mouth in what? Parables. I will utter dark sayings of old. Parables, similitude, metaphors, riddles. Pay attention. Throw the Bible. It's not for the layman, not for the man in the midst of sin. That's what Yahushua said. I will utter things what? Kept secret from the foundation of the earth. From the beginning. From time immortal. I will reveal it when I want to reveal it. Pay attention. When I'm about to wrap up the age, you need to pay attention. When I'm about to wrap it up, I will start revealing, I will open the treasury, the treasure chest of goodies. Go to um, verse 10, Matthew 13 and 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? They asked, they say, Ahushua, why speak unto the multitude in parables? And what did he say? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, you twelve, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Because you twelve are predestinated to understand this, to be taught by me directly. Because I come to you. Most I send me to you twelve. Pay attention. But to the masses, I speak in parables. Only when they keep the Lord, they will start to understand. Only when they obey, they will start to understand. That's what he's saying. They will understand. Other than that, they will be lost. You must keep the laws of God. Return to the laws to get the understanding of what's going on, what's transpiring in front of you. Right in front of you. Pay attention. There's a carnal realm, there's a spiritual realm. And if you don't keep the laws, you get lost. Lost in the source. What did he say? What? For verily I say unto you, verse 17, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see. He said many prophets before you twelve have wished they could see and understand what, it, what, what this book is about. What the mysteries and the riddles are about. And to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. And to understand the things that, I, that I'm expounding to you. And they never get a chance. Pay attention. Because the most I said, meet it, you twelve. Because everything... Is done in measure and time by the Most High. Go to Colossians 1 and 26. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26. Colossians 1 and 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. The mystery that you hid from what? Time immortal is being made what? Manifest to the saints. The saints. Pay attention. The saints. Not to all men. To the saints. The specific people that have been sent to. And specific men are being sent to reveal the mysteries, the mysteries of God. Pay attention. Go to Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. And he said unto them, Luke 10 and 18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yahushua say what? He saw Satan fall to the earth. Pay attention. Fall from, as what? As lightning fall from heaven. When he was kicked out of heaven. He said, I saw when he came down. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. Because what the title of the class is, the devil has come down. And people teaching, you know, all kind of stuff, all kind of false doctrines. That didn't happen yet. That didn't happen yet. These men are, 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 are Satan's agent trying to destroy it. <laughs> the teaching didn't happen yet. You need to pay attention. <laughs> Yahushua Mashiach said, I beheld, I saw Satan as lightning fall from him because I was there and he get booted out. Pay attention. <laughs> he boot him out. 
See the ice soil when you fell. When you fell where? Down to the earth. Because that's where you have what? Dominion on the earth. That's why hell is on the earth. You need to pay attention from time immortal. Hell is on the earth because he has dominion here. Go to Luke 4 and 6. Luke chapter 4 verse 6. Anybody teaching you otherwise? They are deceivers, they are devils, they are liars. Luke 4 and verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. What is he talking about? Verse 1. And who shall have been full of the Holy, Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit is talking about. That's what he's talking about. The Spirit of God is up, up, uppercase S. The Spirit of the Most High. He said what? Was led into the wilderness. We went, we being 40 days tempted of the devil. He had to go through his trial. Moses went up in the mount for 40 days too. You need to pay attention. <laughs> he went for 40 days and he had to go through his trial. Tempted of the devil. Where was he? On the earth walking. You need to pay attention. So Satan has, was cast out. He said, I saw him fall of lightning. I know where he is. So I come down to get the elect of God from in his, in his, in his hand, in his grasp. He'd be delivered into the hand of Satan. Pay attention. For violation of the most high God laws. You Israelites. Being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, fasted, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. After he fasted, he was hungry. So the devil tempted him. He said, Well, if you be the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. So he started tempting him. And Yahushua answered him and saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He said, Bread and that food, him, that is not going to give me. What he's talking about, you must eat food. He's not talking about it. He's talking about to get eternal life. The life he's talking about is eternal life. You cannot get eternal life or everlasting life. By physical food, that's all he tells them. He said, well, I will keep by every word of God, them laws, keep all them laws from the beginning to the end. And the devil taking him up into the high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. So he showed him what? The glory and the glitz of glamour, this, this beast kingdom you're in here. And everybody thinking they're in heaven. Pay attention. I have this massive mansion and I have this fleet of cars and my look at my lifestyle. You need to pay attention. It's Satan's domain. You need to pay attention. You're in hell. And what? And the devil, what? He showed you, he showed the same thing that he's showing all our brothers and sisters now. Same thing. You need to pay attention. All this will I give you. And the devil taking him up in a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. He's, he's your temptation, you Israelites. Here's your trial. You need to pay attention. You see what? And what? And the devil said unto him, as he's saying unto us now, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, the riches and the wealth. Pay attention. That comes with it. You need to pay attention. For that is delivered unto me. Because the most I give it into my, my, my purview. Pay attention. For you to punish you Israelites for violating most I God laws. He's the hand of the Lord. You need to pay attention. And to whomsoever I will I give it. And the devil say, if you bow down and worship me, I will give it to you. Which is well beyond the, the, your comprehension. Pay attention. If thou therefore shall worship me, all shall be thine. Because the most I gave me dominion here. The devil has come down. Yes, he's down. These men, these, these men teaching these vanguards again. That didn't happen yet. Pay attention. <laughs> and you try and send and send unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, get the hell, be hell, hell away from me. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So that's what our brothers and sisters are worshipping. Satan unknowing. Ignorantly. He said, you need to pay attention. The thing they worship in the Most High, to the unknown God whom you ignorantly worship. You think you're worshipping the Most High, but you're worshipping Satan. Pay attention. With the prosperity doctrine, you're crying and tears out and you go, pay attention, and Satan is going, and you're being blessed. Satan is blessing you, pay attention. He said, bottom and worship me, continue in sin, and I will give you all the glory that comes with this, and the power. You need to pay attention. My great lifestyle, <laughs> you need to pay attention. And you're bragging and boasting, worshiping Satan, straight Satan worship, because the devil did you in the devil domain. <laughs> That's what we talk about in Genesis 3, when he tell Eve the same thing. Go to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Who is the serpent? Go to Revelation 12. Because the devil has come down to you. Go to Revelation 12. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. Where? Cast out into the earth. What did Yahushua say in Luke 10 and 18? I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. To where? To the earth. Right here. Pay attention. And his angels were cast out with him. His fallen angels were cast out him where? Right into the earth. Right. We are in their domain. Pay attention. The devil and Satan. Where does that old serpent is talking about? From Genesis 3 and 1. And now the serpent or the devil and Satan was more subtle, crafty than any beast of the field. What was he trying to do to you? He was trying to look chapter 4 verse 6. And 6 through 8. Pay attention from verse 1. 4 to 1. Tempting him, tempting him to get to sin. Bow down and worship me. He paid, needs to pay attention. He's crafty. He's subtle than any beast of the field. Which the Lord God or any man which the Lord God had made. Don't you hear beast? It's talking about men. And you read Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. 
men uh, a compelled as beast. Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. Men, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are beasts. He's comparing men as beasts. This is King Solomon. He said, well, when he ain't beasts and he ain't, that is riddles he's talking about, is metaphors, is parables, is similitudes, is allegories, is petition. That's what's written in this book. And if you don't want the spirit of the Lord, you don't keep in the laws of God, you're not going to get it. Back to Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast or any man of the field, of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the man in this, in this earth, in this realm, Yea, the Satan, and the Satan said, What? And he said unto the woman, He said to who? Eve. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, He said, Eve, God said that? God said, Don't partake, partake with me? God said, Don't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden? Means it's that man. When he hear trees, Mark 8 24, I see men as trees. It's similar to metaphors. There's many talking about it. <laughs> he said, Kumbu says it. There's men, don't want to mess with that man in the midst of the garden. Don't have nothing to do with him, no interaction. Because he's what is more subtle than any man in the field <laughs> on that earth. Pay attention. He's subtle. Don't mess with him. And what? And she and he said what? And he said unto the woman, Eve, yea, had God said, God said that, don't mess with, don't eat of the tree, don't mess with me, don't talk with me. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the soup and the devil and Satan, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. God said we may, we may participate with any other people, but what? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, that specific man. God had said, you shall not eat of it. Don't mess with him. Neither shall he touch it, lest he die. Don't have nothing to do with him. Don't touch. T-O-E-C-H mean what? Touch, yeah. Don't touch. Don't mess. <laughs> Pay attention. Because the devil, that's what he's establishing here, is Satan. Satan was, was tempting the behind. And the serpent said unto, woman, unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He gave her what? A commandment. He said, God said, go die. Now he said, I command you. You shall not die. Pay attention. What did he tell you? You shall bow down and worship me. And I will give you all these things. Pay attention. He's trying to get him to violate God's laws. What did he do to her? Make her violate God's laws. He said, you ain't going to die. So which means what? Disobey the Mosai. You need to pay attention. I am your God now. You're not going to die. The Mosai said, Eve, if you mess with them, you're going to die. He said, no, 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 Eve. If you mess with me, you're not going to die. I become your God. As he has become what? All of, most of our virgin gods in this kingdom. He deceived the whole world. All of us, the Israelites, have been deceived because of violation and sin. Most I cast you behind now. In the lower plane, <laughs> the sinful realm, pay attention, into hell. And, and he said, what? For God doth know that in the day he eat thereof, he is blaspheming God now, then your eyes shall be open. You see that? You say, God, no. If you if listen to me, <laughs> and what I'm about to teach you, you're going to get understanding. And you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. You're going to get power like me. You need to pay attention. You'll get power. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, so she said, she, he, what, he, he used to be here and take her out. Yahushua tell, tell him, get the hands behind me. But she didn't do the same thing. She didn't rebuke him and reprove him. She didn't listen to her God. She rebelled. You see what? She, what she saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree that to be desired to make one wise. She saw the lust, pleasing, pleasurable, and <laughs> desire, lust. She took up the fruit thereof, and did it. She, she, she particip participated with her daughter. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he really she taught her husband. So that's where it starts. The devil has come down. Yeah, you better, you better believe it. Deceiving it behind left, right, and center. Go to Genesis 25 and verse 21. Genesis 25, verse 21. Genesis 25 and 21. Genesis 25, 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. So Rebekah, she couldn't. She couldn't um, Get impregnated, so Isaac would pray to the Most High, and she got she, she conceived a child. And the children struggled together with her, within her, she was having twins. And she said, If it be so, if it's the Most High bless me, why am I thus? Why are they fighting? And she went to inquire of the Lord, she went to pray to the Most High, what's, what's going on? And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. He said, What the two nations in thy womb means what two separate set of people in you <laughs> are bringing from you. You need to pay attention. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy, thy bowels. He said two different manner of people. Two entirely different people. Can be, when that twin come out, it's two different nations. They're going to form two different nations and two different people. Pay attention. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. One will be stronger. And the elder going to what? Serve the younger. The firstborn will be in servitude to the, the last one. <laughs> Pay attention. So the younger one will be in have dominion. He's meant to rule over the firstborn. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in a womb. And the first came out red all over, like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. He was red, with red, red means, Esau means what? His blood through, for through his skin. That's red. Esau, red. 
And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when, he, when, he, when, when she bare him. So they never described what Jacob looked like, because Jacob looked like everybody else on the earth. Men were formed from the dust of the ground. We knew in Genesis. Let us, go, let us go down. I mean, men from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's it. So, so every, Jacob was looking like everybody else. So it was, Esau was the phenomenon on the earth. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field. He's an outdoors man. Pay attention. Honey hunting and fishing and doing whatever. A man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Jacob's characteristics were what? Plain, simple, laid back. Dwelling in tents at home. <laughs> Pay attention. Put it in modern day times, any house. Pay attention. Around the house. Pay attention. Hanging out. But Esau characteristics on the, in the field hunting. Pay attention. He's an outdoors man. Different, two different characters, characteristics. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sat pot pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. So Jacob started to, start to cook. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So Esau means what? Edom or red. You see that? Esau, red pottage, Edom. Esau, red, red, the red man. Blood shred for through his skin. That's what he's talking about, the red man. The red man. What is he talking about? That red pottage? Feed me that red pottage. Go to Hebrews 12 and 16. What is that red pottage talking about? Give me that thing before it done cook. Pay attention. I'm hungry. Let there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Paul is saying there's not any phone, more fornicating or profane person as Esau. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For one morsel of what? Meat. The red pottage is talking about rare meat. The meat wasn't cooked properly. It was raw, rare. <laughs> you see that? Jacob was cooking and he was rare. He said, hungry. Give me it now. From one morsel of meat. Rare meat. Rare meat. Pay attention. The characteristics, again, of Esau. He eats rare meat. Raw meat. <laughs> meat with blood in it. You need to pay attention. The devil has come down. We're going dis to expose all lies and deceptions. Go to Genesis 27 and verse 38 to 41. Genesis 27 verse 38 to 41. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept, because Jacob got the best. They both blessed the boat, right? And Esau sold him, he sold the boat, right? To Jacob and, he, and, and, and Isaac gave um, Jacob the blessing. And what? What did Isaac say? And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So Isaac said, What? Okay, since I gave him the blessing already. You're going to what? You're going to have the, he's the blessing that Isaac gave him. You're going to rule over all of them. That was Jacob's blessing. You're going to rule the earth. You're going to be ruling the earth. Pay attention. So Esau had to get what? He said, okay, <laughs> okay a, a compromised blessing. You're going to be what? The fatness of the earth. You're going to have all the wealth. What did the devil tell Satan? Bow down and worship me and I will give you all the, all the, the, the glory here. The power and the glory. The, the wealth. Wealth. So Satan has control here. Pay attention. So what? You need to pay attention. You need to understand. Esau and say, Yo, your Blessing shall be what? The dwelling and the fatness of the earth. Well, everything going to run in this earth. You pay attention. You're going to have dominion on this earth, in this realm, in hell, in this sinful plane. Pay attention. And by thy sword shall all live. The sword, by your weapons, you will dominate this sinful realm, this hell, or Satan's kingdom. You need to pay attention. That's your blessing. By your sword, weapons of war shall you live. And shall, and shall serve. When I want your, 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 your resources, I come and I get it by what? By my sword. You need to pay attention. By my sword, this is a blessing. By thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. Because why? He said you're going to serve the brother. When you're done, get this blessing. You're going back into servitude. You need to pay attention. You, and then you're going to what? Serve your brother. Because he, Jacob is going to have the dominion at the end. You need to pay attention. And it shall come to pass. When thou shalt have the dominion, because Jacob had the what? The first dominion. Under King Solomon, King, King, King David, King, King Saul. Who had the dominion? Israel. You need to pay attention. You had the dominion. <laughs> We're running things. And then the most I say, when you had the dominion, because Israel went into the midst of sin, and then the most I send the sword. The devil has come down unto you. Pay attention. And you're going to have the dominion. You're going to have the power on the earth, the fatness of the heaven, and by your sword you're going to live. Hell on earth. You're going to bring hell on earth. <laughs> pay attention. That's the blessing of Esau. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. Where his father blessed him. Because he said, what? The most I father gave him dominion. <laughs> over me. And he said, Esau said in his heart, in his mind, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. 
Then will I slay my brother Jacob? When my father die, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> you see what? When Isaac die, I'm gonna kill him. I'll put him to death. Go to First Maccabees one and one. First Maccabees chapter one, verse one. First Maccabees one and one. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian, Alexander, the son of Philip the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So Alexander was the first king over Greece. The Greek, the, the Greek Empire, the third beast kingdom, is the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Greeks. So this one is for the Greeks, the Greeks. Pay attention. He said the Greek. He began to reign over Greece, and met, and he made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. He conquered every king, every kingdom on the earth because by his blessing is what by thy sword shall thou live. He conquered what all the kings of the earth, and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations. In so much that the earth was quiet before him. He shut everything down. Because that's Esau's blessing. Pay attention. And whereupon he was exalted. He got what? Prideful. When he's exalted, lifted up. And his heart was lifted up. He got full of pride, arrogance. Nobody can test me. Pay attention. Nobody can stand against me. And he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings. Who became tributaries unto him. They paid, everybody's paying taxes to him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. He fell into sickness. He said, I'm going to die. So what did he do? Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So he, what, he distributed his kingdom while he did, before he died. So he's what? His four generals. This is Cassandra, Seleucus, Lysimachus, and Petoni. He said, what? And after his death, they all put crowns upon their head. And what? They put crowns upon what? themselves. They ruled the dominions wherever they had the four dominions. They divided Alexander Kingdom in four. The realm where he was dominion of, everybody take apart a portion. And so did their sons after them many years. So they passed. Whoever was ruling, they, their sons take over, obviously. And so did their and so did their sons after them many years. And evils were multiplied in the earth. And what? Evils were multiplied in the earth. Pay attention. Wickedness or sins were what? Multiplied. You need to pay attention. So you had the Babylonians. He had the Babylonians doing what they doing, doing the thing. The Greek was what? The, the Babylonians are doing their thing. The Medo-Persians are doing their thing. But when Alexander come, the Greek, the third beast kingdom, or the kingdom of the Greeks, pay attention. That bit, he, they say what? They, by a sword he's going to live and he conquer everything on the earth. Pay attention. And he got evil to multiply on the earth. Pay attention. The devil has come down unto you. You need to pay attention. You see what? Evils were multiplied. They saw wickedness on the earth in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a capacity that they never saw before. You need to pay attention. On a level or plane that they never saw before. Evils were multiplied in the earth. That's when the, folk, the, the, the Alexander and, his, and his, the Greeks came. And there came out of them a wicked root. Antiochus, surname Epiphanes. Out of the, the, Greek, the Greek kingdom, a wicked root. They say what? Called Antiochus Epiphanes. The son of Antiochus the king. That's Antiochus Epiphanes, Antiochus the fourth. Son of Antiochus the king, which was Antiochus the third. Antiochus the third. Who had been a hostage at Rome, so he was he was given given over to the went to the Romans in place of his father. In place of his father, when they lost the war in battle, they lost the battle, and he was put in, he took the captivity. He went and served the captivity. He served the captivity. And who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in a hundred and thirty and seven years of the kingdom of the Greeks. So after he was released from his captivity, because he went, he come back and he take dominion. He take dominion and rule the kingdom of the Greeks for a hundred, sorry, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventy years. So of the kingdom of the what? Of the kingdom of the Greeks, when the Greeks came into power. He reigned a hundred in the hundred and thirty and seventy years. In those days went out from Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are wronged about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So the Israelites, again, wicked men amongst them, started to make out allegiances with them. With, 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 um, in the Greek, the oppressors. Pay attention, there's nothing new under the sun. The Israelites, pay attention. There's always going to be traitors among you. Pay attention. Of your own brethren, your own blood. We'll take you out. So this establishing Antiochus. Now, now when the kingdom was established, verse 16, before Antiochus, he taught to reign over Egypt. He what he now he want? But told me well now. Another another Greek like him. Pay attention. He said, well, I want them, I want them, he want more. They started in fight. Pay attention for power. He taught to reign over Egypt that he might have the dominion of two realms. You see that? Because Alexander divided into four realms. 
And he want, I want to now. Pay attention. Wherefore he entered into Egypt with a great multitude of with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy and made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. So he started, they started in fight. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled with many, and many were wounded to death. So what? Many of them were wounded. Thus they got the strongholds, the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof. And after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again in the hundred forty and third year and went up against Israel and Jerusalem with a great multitude. So he came and came against the Israelites. And entered probably into the sanctuary and took away the golden altar and the candlesticks of light and all the vessels thereof and the table of the showbread, and the pouring vessels, and the vials, and the censers of gold, and the veil, and the crown, and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled down. He took also the silver and gold, and the precious vessels. Also he took the hidden treasures which he found. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, having made a great massacre, and spoken very proudly. Arrogance, he put his right to death left, right, and center. Just as what the Babylonians did, pay attention. Just as the Babylonians did, did pay attention. Therefore there was great mourning in Israel in every place where they were. And after the land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof, and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion. And after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute taxes unto the city of Judah, who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude, big army, and spake peaceable words unto them. He come and speak with peaceable words, but all was deceit. Pay attention. Deceit. For when they had given him credence, what was Satan doing to Yahushua? Speaking what? Deceit to him. Bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. Pay attention. When you speak to Eve, Kyle, you see that? The Genesis 3 and 1? The, there, was, there was what? No more subtle. That old serpent was more subtle. Sorry, Genesis 3 and 1. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. It was more, more subtle or crafty. Back to 1 Maccabees 1 and 30. And spake peaceable words unto them, but always deceit. Subtle and crafty. The devil has come down. Pay attention. Character traits of Satan. Same thing he was doing to Yahushua. Bow down and worship me. Bow down and worship me to Eve. Did God say? God say go die. No, you're going to die. Surely you're not going to die. Pay attention. <laughs> I speak in peace, but we are coming to take him behind out. For when they had given him, for when they had given him credence, he fell sudden, suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. Pay attention. Crafty, deceived the behind and take them out. And when he had taken the spoils of the city, he set it on fire and pulled down the houses and walls thereof every side. So he burned Jerusalem too. Pay attention. So the Babylonians, the Greeks, yeah, pay attention. And, but the woman and the children took the captive and possessed the cattle. The Greeks, yes, then built the, the city of David with a great and strong wall and mighty with towers and made it a stronghold for them. So they what? Fortified the city of David and what? That was the garrison. They set up a garrison there. And they put therein a sinful nation, wicked men, and fortified themselves therein. They stored it also with armor and victuals. And when they had gathered together the spoils of Jerusalem, they laid them up there. So they became a source near. It's good, right in the middle, midst of Israel. Pay attention. Overlooking. A conquering. An occupying force. Pay attention. Characteristics of the devil. He's come down. He's an occupier. You need to pay attention. Occupying force. For it was a place to lie in wait against the sanctuary and an evil adversary to Israel. An occupying force. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. Thus they shed innocent blood on every side of the sanctuary and defiled it. As it is to this day. Occupying force. You need to pay attention. Wherever. Because I have dominion. Wherever. By the sword thou shalt live. You need to pay attention. Verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. He said, I want everybody on one accord. And everyone should leave his law. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king. All nations should stop doing their own laws and doing what? Do what I do after my, my bidding. Or my commands. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profane the Sabbath. Pay attention and go into a sin, go into a idolatry. And many of the Israelites who had the laws of God, the children of God, went into what? The midst of sin, as we do now. <laughs> Pay attention. Because we're in hell and we don't even understand it. And worshiping the devil and don't even understand it. We don't have a clue. Clapping and singing and dancing every Sunday. Pay attention. He's still in the midst of sin. He's worshiping Satan. Straight Satan worship. Pagan Satan worship still. We need to pay attention. All these fake faults, whatever they worship it. Still not keeping the laws of God, they're worshiping the devil. Pay attention. Because the devil has come down. For pay attention. This is Antiochus. This is the Greek that was ruling on the earth. Pay attention. For the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and to the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land. Pay attention. Sin. Worship Satan. Straight Satan worship. 
you need to pay attention. So he's talking about um, who come and the time will come when the world will go and worship Satan. The world is worshiping Satan. Pay attention. From the beginning, from the fall of Adam, the world is worshiping Satan already. Straight Satan worship from the fall of Adam. Pay attention. The deceivers. Deceivers. Pay what? And forbid burnt offerings. That's why we're here. To pay attention. <laughs> to reveal what? The hidden things. The things hidden from the foundation of the world. Mysteries hidden from the foundation of the world. That the world is following Satan. The world is worshiping the devil. Because Revelation 12 and 9, they say that that, that, that old serpent called the, the, the devil and Satan will deceive the whole world. The whole world will be deceived. Pay attention. It's worshiping Satan. And you thinking you hold you anymore, right? Just pay attention. The devil is very crafty. He's what? More subtle. <laughs> he says there's no, no beast. He's more subtle than any beast in the field. Verse 47, first Matthew 1 and 47. And they set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Altars, groves, chapels of idols. Idolatry, witchcraft. And sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. So they went up to the Israelites, made them forsake the law, going to miss a sin, to the end that they might forsake the law and change all the ordinances of the Most High God. That's the objective of the devil. Pay attention to the gate to violate God's laws. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, Antiochus, he said he should die. Put him to death. Who don't for forsake the laws of the God, the morality, pay attention, the moral fiber that rules the society, he said, well, forsake it, pay attention. The most I say, I give you is a life that moral, moral laws to rule your nation, pay attention, to rule the earth, and you forsake it. Pay attention, the devil deceives you. <laughs> you need to pay attention. And whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die, put them to death. Then many of the people were gathered unto them to wit, everyone that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. So everyone that what? Forsook the law, the Israelites who flee the law started to do sin, evils, and drove the Israelites into secret places. But the Israelites had to run for their life. Pay attention. Run for succor. If the ones who want to keep the law had to run. Even wheresoever they could they could flee for succor. Ones who want to keep the law had to run and hide. Now the fifteenth day of the month, Kashlu, in the hundred forty and fifth year, they set up the abomination of desolation upon the altar and built idol altars throughout the cities of Judah on every side. Set pay attention. Let's think about the Mosai Temple and started to worship idols and burnt incense at the door, doors of their houses and in the streets and when they had rent in pieces the books of the law which they found they burned them in fire to start to decimate the schools and burn the schools pay attention the devil has come down you pay attention so you need to pay, this didn't happen yet you're about to go into the dark age and all this that and you need to pay attention we've been, we've been in the dark age since the fall of Adam and Eve pay attention worshiping Satan the Israelites were still fighting, keeping the laws, keeping the laws. Some of brethren were still keeping the laws, but the majority was still going off in the midst of sin. The world was in sin. The world was worshiping Satan. Pay attention, always, because they are Satan's children. <laughs> and the objective was the devil is learn, learn the children of Israel. Decided what? Destroy the law. The moral law that the Most High gave us. The heavenly law. The heavenly laws dis dis destroy them. To keep the society in morality, keep them in righteousness, on a, on a straight path, doing what is right. Come and follow me. Bow down and worship me, and I will give you all this. Just pay attention to Luke 4 and 6. They tell the Ushua. Verse 57. First Maccabees 1 and, 50, 1 and 57. And wheresoever was found with any, the book of the testament, any Israelite defined with the book of the law, or if any consented to the law, they want to keep the law, the king's commandment was that they should be put to death. Kill them. So the devil has come down unto you, you need to pay attention. Who came and do it? <laughs> you need to pay attention. From Alexander the Greek, you need to pay attention. Evils were multiplied in the earth. You need to pay attention. From verse Seven from verse nine, evils were multiplied in the earth, coming on the next level, because from the Babylonians, from from Pharaoh, from all the evils always here. But this he said on the next, and them times Satan was going going to and fro. Pay attention, but he, he come to get cast down, and then the evils were multiplied in the earth. You need to pay attention. The time he was cast down, he went on the next level <laughs> of wickedness. You need to pay attention. It's all timeline. He was cast down, and he wreaked hell on the earth. You need to pay attention. Thus did they by authority unto the Israelites every month, to as many as were found in the cities, now the five and twentieth day of the month, they did sacrifice upon the altar, which was upon the altar of God. So they were sacrificing the, the profane in the altar. And which time, according to the commandment, they put to death certain women, Israelite women, that had, be, that had caused their children to be circumcised. So these Israelite women that circumcised their children according to the law of Moses, they put them to death. And they hung the infants about their necks. They what? Hang the infants about the neck. You need to understand what type of what type of men come on the earth. You need to pay attention. And rifle their houses and slew them that had circumcised them, who kept the laws of God, put them to death. 
Howbeit many in Israel were fully resolved and confirmed in themselves not to eat any unclean thing. So we we, we defiled, eating defiled foods. Whereof they chose rather to die that they might not be defiled with meat. Rather than break the most high God, break the most high God laws, we're gonna die for them laws. Pay attention. And that they might not profane the holy covenant. We're not gonna violate God's laws. Put me to death, pay attention. So then they died. They said, kill me, put you to death. We don't keep them laws. You need to because they understand more than it, it, the heathen, you need to pay attention. And there was very great wrath upon Israel. Pay attention. That was Yahushua Sahib saying, Blessed is he that is not, that would not be offended in me. You better stand up and keep them laws. Come what may. <laughs> that we say, Come what may, keep them laws. He that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. Your soul will be saved. You need to pay attention when I come and bring hell out, come and destroy everything on this earth. If you don't, <laughs> endure to the end. So because the devil has come down, go to um, 2 Maccabees chapter 5 and verse 1. 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 1. Second Maccabees 5 and 1. About the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt. So it's going into this Antiochus again. Antiochus again. Antiochus. So jump to verse. is establishing Antioch, Antiochus. Jump to verse 24. He sent also that the testable ringleader Apollonius with an army of 220,000 commanded him to slay all those that were in their best age. Kill the men in the what? In their prime. Kill them as the like men who in their prime. Pay attention. And to sell the women and the younger sword. Sell the women and the younger children who come into Jerusalem. When they wait, they came to Jerusalem and pretending peace. They would do what? Again. The devil what? There was no more subtle. Genesis 3 and 1. There was no more subtle than he was more, he was more subtle than any piece of the field. The, the devil has come down. With what? Who come into Jerusalem and pretending peace? Peace of the words. Did forbear till the holy day of the Sabbath. They wait until what? The Sabbath. We come, we come in peace. Waiting until the Israelites were observing the Sabbath. When taking the Jews keeping holy day. When taking the Jews keeping holy day. When they start observing the Sabbath. He commanded his men to arm themselves. And so he slew all them that were going to the celebrating of the Sabbath. He put them to death. Pay attention. Because you know they didn't go fight on the Sabbath. Pay attention. And running through the city with weapons. Slew great multitudes. But Judas Maccabeus with nine others. Or thereabout, withdrew himself into the wilderness and lived in the mountains after the manner of beasts. So that they run, because they had no food, they had to live on the run, hide, hide. With his company, who fed on herbs continually, lest they should be partakers of the pollution. So they had to they eat what they had to eat, pay attention. So it's establishing the devil has come down. Second Maccabees 6 and, and 1. Not, not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God. You say, go and tell them to stop keeping them laws. And to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem and to call it the temple of Jupiter, Olympias, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter, the defender of the strangers, as they did desire to dwell in that place. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, the heathen. The riot and what? Reveling in the Most High God temple. Pay attention. Who died with harlots? So the devil has come down to you? You need to pay attention. <laughs> we have no respect for the Most High God laws. The, 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 the men of Persians had what? We expect they understood the go back and build a temple. You need to pay attention. <laughs> the most I tell Cyrus, he trimmed a vision, go back and build a temple, send back the Israelites home. So when Cyrus died, Darius honored it. And send back um, Joshua and Zerubel to build up the temple. He sent back Joshua and Zerubel to go build up the temple. And take all the gold, take all of the ornaments that they take. So what the, the Metapolitans, they still what? Understood the temple. They went and prayed to the most I pay attention. But what this one come, the Greeks came and do what? The temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. The, 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 the defile, the Most High Temple. With lasciviousness. Who dallied with harlots, prostitutes, and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Within the earth, right? In the, the circuit of the holy places, the Most High Temple. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. They were laying with men in the temple. You need to pay attention. And they brought in what? Defiled food. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbidden. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So what if he can't say you're a Jew, you get put to death. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they brought they were brought by what? They were brought by bitter constraint, forced to eat the sacrifices, the defiled foods. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, or the Bacchanal, as we know we say, look, the carnival of Bacchanal or these Labor Day or these um, Caribana and all these kind of these fests. These masks, you pay attention, it's feast to Bacchus, it's all pagan worship. Pay attention, you're worshiping Satan, straight Satan worship. 
They were forced then, our forefathers, but now what? You do nothing willingly now. You need to pay attention. Paying pay tens of thousands of dollars to, to save up and, and to, uh, to pay attention to go and do it. Worship the devil. <laughs> so the whole world is deceived. The devil has come down. Yes, you need help. You as a light, pay attention. And what? When the Feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. They were what? In procession mean what? For in formation. Pay attention. What they do now? Uh, music going on the road and formation, procession. Pay attention. In lewd lasciviousness. Pay attention. Worshipping Satan himself. Worshipping Satan. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led around about the city, the babes who hung at their breasts, they cast, they cast them headlong from the wall, headlong, by the hold them at the foot and drop them and pay attention. The devil has come down, you need to pay attention. Who does these things? You need to pay attention. And others that had run in, together into caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly being discovered by to Philip were all burned together. They were putting them to death left right and center and pay attention. The devil is come down. That's the, the title of the class. Good to uh, Second Maccabees 7 and read verse 1. And it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and wines. They were what? Tormented by be with beaten. So the seven brethren, seven brothers, these ones are keeping the law. They torment them with what? Scourges and whips. Then the king being in a rage commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot. When they say what? We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. The king did what? He commanded Antiochus that the cauldrons, the pans and the cauldrons be made hot. Heat them up. Which fortress being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first. The first brother that spake, he said, cut the tongue out. Pay attention. And to cut off the utmost parts of his body. To what? Cut off his limbs. Take a, Pay attention. Take all his limbs. The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. The rest of the other siblings. This is Eliezer and Eli Eliezer Charen. Pay attention. Eliezer, his wife, and his seven sons. Pay attention. Putting them to death. Torture. The devil has come down. He did pay attention. When the most I say evil is multiplied on the earth, pay attention. And when he was thus maimed, in all his members, the dismember him, he commanded him, being yet alive, to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. You see that? Alive, limbless, tongueless, and frying in that oil. You need to pay attention. Fried to, in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully seeing us. <laughs> the mother say what? Quote that endure to the end. Keep them laws. You need to pay this this is above their understanding. Just really what they understood is a spiritual realm. They understood we are gods over them. We are rulers over them. We are a children of God. We are we are going back to be angels. Pay attention. We are going back to be gods. Back to the heavenly realm. Out of this hell. So they understand he says keep them laws. That's all keep this is beyond this is flesh. This is flesh. You ain't sin. He said that. You ain't sin. They said, let's keep the laws. Don't worry about it. You go in back to your God. You need to pay attention. That's what you understand. So that's why you can put fear in you. Pay attention. Do this. Eat just one flesh and you're afraid to die. So you go eat it. Keep you in sin. You need to pay. Not understanding. You is God. That's what he does. They tell you, I wish I bow down and worship me. And I will give you all this. He's, he's crafty and what? Subtle. Pay attention. Deceive, and de deceive you and put fear in you and keep you here. And trap and get put to death. Because they're violating the God. We tell Eve, surely you ain't gonna die. You're not gonna die. Don't watch him. The most I said, surely you ain't gonna die. Pay attention. And he take him out, he take out him, Adam, and we all fall from there. You need to pay attention. That we should say, end of the end. <laughs> Don't worry about him. Pay attention. Back to first, first, second Maccabees 7 and verse 5. She said, What? And they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully. Thus said the Lord, keep them laws. The Lord God looketh upon us, and in truth had comforted us, as Moses in his song. Which witness to their faces declared saying, and he shall be comforted in his servants. Most I say, what? Keep the law. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my son. That's my child. That's a child of God. That's a elect. That's a saint. Pay attention. Go to um, Revelation 6 and 9. Revelation 6, I read verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. The souls of them that were what? Put to death for the word of God, for keeping them laws, testifying them laws. And for the testimony which they held, pay attention. They will be, what he says, I saw them, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, 
holy and true. Thus thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. So the, the most ask it, the most say, when you go bring the judgment on them on the earth in hell, pay attention, when you go destroy them. And white robes were given unto them. White robes means what? Purity. They're going back to saints. Pay attention. Or sainted. Back to angels. Angelic status. It's talking about the glow. When it be um, Matthew 9, 17, I want to talk about Yahushua was trans transfigured. It's a glow. You see him. Eli um, this is Yahushua, Elijah, and Moses. Pay attention. It's trans transfigured into the angelic form. Pay attention. They're making all these movies have a turn. And people just watching and being entertained and not understanding. These people understand. They have your scrolls. They have your record. They, they conquer you. They have your records. You need to pay attention. They know who you are, and you don't know who you are. Because you, you, you're forsaken your God. And white robes are given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they wish to be killed. The martyrs. The martyrs who die keeping the, and the, the laws of God. That's the real matter. The ones who die for keeping the laws of God, not these fake, <laughs> and the devil that this martyr, and this one is martyr, and martyr, so and so, and martyr, so and so, and this one, this one is martyr for talking, talking what? Teaching what? Um, pagan Christianity. You need to pay attention. The, the Bible is talking about the men who could keep that, who was keeping laws, statutes, and judgment, and testimonies to, of the Most High God. Blameless, minus animal sacrifice. Who can keep them laws? That's a matter. You need to pay attention. You've been deceived. <laughs> the book of martyrs, the book of martyrs. You pay attention, read the book. You say, what the hell? <laughs> you need to pay attention. Garbage. The devil is deceiving you. Pay attention in this false religion. <laughs> and you're thinking, yeah, yeah, just sit down and clap and dance and sing on Sunday and say, Love the Lord. And he's like, You will be a martyr. No, he's talking about the Israelites who keep them laws and will stand up stiffly and endure to the end. Second Maccabees 7 and verse 7. And when the first was dead, after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, when they did what? The Antiochus ordered them to what? Pull off the skin of the head. With the hair, they scalp him. Scalp him. You need to pay attention. They ask him, will thou eat? Before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body. They scalp him and tell him, you go eat the swine? You need to pay attention. But he answered in his own language and said, Hebrew, no. Wherefore? He also received the next torment in order, as the former did. They, put him, they said that they started to torment him the same as the first brother. And when he was at last gasp, when he was about to die, give up the spirit, he said, Thou like a fury take us out of this present life. He said, what? As a madman, you're putting us to death out of this present life, but what? But the king, uppercase K, the king of the world shall raise us up. You need to pay attention. The most High God is resurrecting us. That's what they, that's what they understood. That's why we on this plane don't understand. We fear, we fear to die, we fear to this. Keep the laws of your God, Israel. Right? Come back to the laws and he will fight for you. Pay attention. It's a higher spiritual understanding. Pay attention. And who had died for his laws. The one who had what? Died for his laws. What do you read in Revelation 6 and 9 and 10? How long will he bring judgment of an avenger of blood on those that died? We pay attention. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Revelation 6 and 9. Pay attention. <laughs> they were, but these ones will be sealed up as angels of God or saints. Pay attention. And what? Back to Second Maccabees 7 and verse 9. These ones who are what? The king of the world shall raise us up. Back to mortals like Yahushua has raised up. Back to mortals, back to God. Who have died for his laws unto everlasting life because you were with him from the beginning. <laughs> your, 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 your spirits are with the most high from the beginning. That's how you can be able to keep the laws, and that's how you, you will be able to die for the laws. Pay attention. Because what they did, what, what did Antiochus do? And when they were when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they scalped him. Pay attention. This they scalped him. This book is called The Way of the Warrior. The Way of the Warrior. The Way of the Warrior. It's the Way of the Warrior. I had this book of many, many years now. The Way of the Warrior by the editors of Time Life Book. By the editors of Time Life Books. I read from page 32. Because they did what? They pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, the scalping. So who? The devil has come down? That was the Greeks. Pay attention. The, the scalp. Pay attention. You're going to see something. This was in... When, when was Antiochus reigning? Antiochus reigned in around what? Um, 175 BC to 164 BC. That was his reign. He was born in 215 BC and died in 164 BC, but he was reigning from 175 BC to, to 164 BC. That was his reign. So that was the time this was, they were scalping? Yes. <laughs> they pulled off the skin of his head obviously, with the hair. Pay attention. This is, what, this is something we're talking about, the, the way of the warrior. The North, American, the North American Indians. This is what we're talking about here. The destabilizing effect of European policies and weaponry was e exemplified by the fortunes of the Iroquois League. This is talking about the North American Indians. 
the Dutch supplied guns helped the Iroquois overrun the Huron in 1649. And this is talking about where? 1649. That is, this is AD. You need to pay attention. Let's see what they have written here. And deal a setback to the French in the process. So they were supplying the Iroquois, the, the, the native Indians, with guns to, to, put, to battle the French. So they were all trying to conquer, but they were using tribe against tribe, certain tribe against tribe. Other effects of the European presence on Indian warfare were no less dramatic and debilitating. By paying bounties for the scalps of their native and white enemies. They were what? Paying, the Europeans were paying what? Bounties for the scalps of the native enemies who were against them and white enemies. With the French, if the French against me, are paying bounty. If the English against me, the French are paying their bounty. Whoever, the Dutch, are paying bounty to take out the adversaries. Whether it be in native Indian or white, pay attention like themselves. Because they, 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 they're struggling for what? Resources and property and wealth. For the example, for example, the colonists so encouraged scalping by Indian warriors that some chroniclers, chroniclers later mistakenly concluded that Europeans had, in, had instituted the practice. So they're saying they were promoting it so much that they what? They say the, the, the Europeans instituted it. So what is what he's saying here? It wasn't the institution, it wasn't the Europeans that instituted it. But the chroniclers, the people that were making document, documentation, mistakenly concluded that Europeans had instituted the practice. They say that it's a, they say that it's a mistake that they say it's a European custom, scalping. <laughs> but it's, meaning what? It's a native custom. Pay attention, the North American Indians. Although no one knows with certainty when scalping began in North America, the custom was well established by the time the first white men reached the continent. It was, they say what, what? Well established in North America by the time when the first white men reached the continent. Is that true? You keep reading. As early as 1535. Scalping appalled by appalled scalping appalled many Europeans. Although barbarities such as beheading, disemboweling, and drawing and quartering were common enough back home. The Europeans were what? Come accustomed to what? Disemboweling, beheading, drawing, and quartering. They would drop the big put it on the machine and stretch it behind and, and, and uh, the wine press, the grape press, and stretch it behind him and, and pull it apart. Pay attention. Drawing and quartering, breaking in quarters, four parts, pulling four directions by horses. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. They, that was common. That was the, 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 the customary be barbarities. But you see what? It's calling apart many Europeans. What do you name 2nd Maccabee 7? 2nd Maccabee 7 and 7. So when the first was dead, after this manner, they brought the second, the second brother, Eliezer's second son, to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, that was scalping. Yeah, that was what Alexander Rain went, 175 BC to 164 BC. But this is what the North America, they were in here, 16, 1535, around 15th century, 14th, 15th century. They say that, no, this is not, the North American Indian was doing it. Pay attention. No, 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 no. You see what? Where was scalping and what? Quartering and disemboweling and drawing was. Go to 2 Maccabees chapter 9. This Disemboweling, 2 Maccabees 9, I'm reading 1. 2 Maccabees 9, I'm reading 1 to 6. They said, dismembering, quartering, about that time came Antiochus with dishonor out of the country of Persia. For he had entered a city called Persepolis. So he's talking about who? Antiochus. Antiochus. What did he do? Um, but the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remediless, remediless came upon him and saw torments of the inner part. So the Most High put, put a plague on him. Because of what he was planning, that he would come to Jerusalem and make it a common burying place of the Jews. Because he was saying, I'll come back there and kill everybody inside. A common burying place of the Jews. <laughs> so the Most High gave him a plague, smite him. And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels. He had did what? Tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Pay attention. He had tormented other men's bowels. Go back to the, go back to the way of the warrior. Page 32 again. Scalling appalled many Europeans. So we scalping appalled many Europeans. All the barbarities such as beheading, disemboweling. Doing what? Disemboweling. So what was Antiochus doing in 175 to 164 BC? Disemboweling. He had what? Tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Pay attention. Tormented their bowels. You need to pay attention. So the disemboweling was already from them. They brought it. Pay attention. 
And, you, who, and the brother what? The scalping also. Pay attention. But the scene was here. In the sense, 14, 15th century, AD. That was talking about, this is talking about BC. This is what called the devil has come down to you. You need to pay attention. Scal scalping appalled many Europeans, although barbarities such as beheading, disemboweling, and drawing were, and quartering were common enough back home. All the Europeans did not introduce the practice of scalping. Stop. He said what? Europeans did not introduce the practice of scalping. What we read in 2 Maccabees 7 and 7? <laughs> and when they had pulled off the hair of his head with the hair, that was way back in what? 175 BC to 164 BC when Antiochus Epiphanes was terrorizing the Israelites. Pay attention to the same bread, sons of Eliezer. He was, they what? Scalp, scalping was there? Yes. But they say what they in the book? All the Europeans did not introduce the practice of scalping. They didn't introduce it. The, the, the Native Americans doing it. You need to pay attention. It's, the, the Bible, the Bible doesn't lie. This is the history of the Israelites. Pay attention. So you need to pay attention when you're reading. And did not introduce the practice of scalping. Yes, they did. According to said the Lord provided with it with impetus that when they put a price on the scalps of their enemies, they were paying for scalps. Scalping became an industry fostered initially by the Dutch in New York in the mid 17th century. Stop. It became a what industry? Fostered by the what? The Dutch in the 17th century. Antiochus was scalping people where? 175, between 175 BC and 164 BC. Pay attention. This is talking about the 17th century. You <laughs> need pay attention. Later by the French and the English. They were what? Making an industry with a business. The market in enemy scale boomed. And within a century, the colony of Pennsylvania was offering a bounty equal to $134 for an adult male scalp taken by it from a hostile party. Pay attention. Under the under, under the English bounty system, scalp takers, scalp takers seeking a reward could no longer keep the trophy for ritual purposes, but had to surrender it to officials so they couldn't keep it for display. Scalps redeemed for a bounty were burned and buried, except in Salem, in colonial Massachusetts. There they were displayed on the walls of the town courthouse, as brazenly as in any Indian village. They were what? Displays on the town courthouse? <laughs> Pay attention. Pay attention. Ministers promoted scalping expedition from the pulpits of the churches. From where? The pulpits of the churches. You need to pay attention. They promoted it from the pulpits of the churches. Anglo-American wood, woodsmen bearing fresh scalps strutted down the streets of Boston, Albany, and other colonial towns. Souvenir scalps even proved to be popular conversation pieces in fashionable parlors back in London. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. You see what? The devil is coming down to you, but I believe it. The devil is coming down. You need to pay attention. Go back to um, 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 3, 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 10. After him was the third made a mocking stock, and when he was required, he put out his tongue, and that, and that right soon, holding forth his hand manfully, and said courageous, courageously, These I had from heaven, and for, and for his laws I despise them, and from him I hope to receive them again. You see what? You, do, you cut them off. You put your hands and say, take them off. In so much as the king... And they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage, for that he nothing regarded the pains. He said that he didn't care. Because they understood the father taught them <laughs> they were with the Most High from the beginning, and they had the spirit of the Most High God on them. Pay attention. Those, the, God, the Lord had not given you what? A spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1 and 7. The Most High God had not given you a spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1 and 7. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a strong man. Because you were with him from the beginning. You need to pay attention. This thing, <laughs> this is no new thing under the sun. The thing that had been is the thing that shall be, and the thing that, that is, is the same thing. It happened then, it happened in the now. Pay attention. Back to 2 Maccabees 7 and verse, they were 13. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented, mangled the fourth in like manner. They, what? they were tormenting and mangling them. Pay attention. Disemboweling them. Were quartering them. Pay attention. That's what it's going about. So where did that come from? So you're talking about 175 to 164 BC, the reign of Antiochus Epiphanes. Pay attention. <laughs> you see, evils will multiply them on the earth. The things that we've never seen on the earth, are, are be, they introduced. You need to pay attention. So who is this that came? Who is the people? You need to pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. But the most I is saying, when he say, not a people, I will provoke the jealousy with them that are not a people. You need to understand. <laughs> is, is it literal or metaphorical? The most I say, I go, chapter you, so I send captivity again. Let it be conquered by those which are not a people, Romans 10 and 19, and, and Deuteronomy 32, 21. They are not a people. 
Because evil is going to be multiplied in the earth. The devil has come down to you. Pay attention. In human form. Pay attention. The spirits, you need to pay attention. Second Maccabees 7 and 15. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Antiochus, thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. You are what? You are what? Corruptible. You are not the people. Pay attention. Thou dost what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. He said, don't even think in the head the most I forsake me. What is he talking about? Go to, um, um, go to Romans. Romans chapter 11. And verse 2. I read one. I say then, had God cast away his people? Had God but for sickness, people? God forbid. Paul said, God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God had not cast away his people forever, or for sickness people forever, which he foreknew. So he had not for sickness people forever. What do you not that the, what the scriptures say to Elias? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, What? Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men. Who have not bowed down the knee to the image of Baal, they never worship Satan. Go to Moses. I say, I always have never forsake them. Even so, the same way that as you tell Elijah, even so, the same way, at this present time, there also is a remnant according to election of grace. There's always a remnant. Most I say, I never forsake my people. All oh, <laughs> I cast them for, for sin of violation, but there's always a remnant. Who are gonna do what to command them to do? Pay attention. Souls that were with me from the beginning, spirits that were with me from the beginning. <laughs> I haven't forsaken them. Go back to the second Maccabees 7 and 15. And what? Yet, yeah, think not that our nation is forsaken of God. He didn't forsake us all. We, we, in the midst of sin, he, he used to, to, violate, to violate us and beat our behind down. But abide a while, and behold, his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. Stop. What did he say to him? Antiochus, he will, but the most I will torment you and your seed. Eventually. The attention. He said, well, don't worry. We're going to be held. Your hell is about to come. <laughs> you need to pay attention. Your torment is about to come. He said, but abide a while. He said, wait. And behold, his great power, the most high great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. You need to pay attention. He that devour, sh devour, it, devour it shall be devoured. Jeremiah 30, 16. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Revelation 13, 11. He, it, and he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. You need to pay attention. The most high, the most high is balanced. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of, faith of the saints. That we just tell him. Dogs <laughs> come up be 7 and 17. But abide a little while, and behold his great power. Watch the power of the Most High. How he will torment thee and thy seed. He will what? Take out you and your seed. Pay attention. As he exalted you, and he will multiply on the earth, he's going to take you out. He pay attention. After him also they brought the sixth, who being ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, because we went into sin, having sinned against our God. But that's why we are in, the, in hell on this earth right now, in this diaspora, scattered in the four winds. For sin, we suffer it for what? Our own sins, you Israelites. That's what we need to, the most I say, until they acknowledge their, their, their transgression, Hosea 5, 15. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Until you acknowledge the most I gone wrong, you go punish her behind, I will go and return to my place. The most I said, go back to the heaven of heavens till they acknowledge their offense. Till you Israelites acknowledge means what? Confess and forsake your sins and bend down on your knees and beg for forgiveness. Sir. Pay attention. Beg me to forgive you your, your transgression and, 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 and show mercy to you. And seek my face. Come back to my laws. In their affliction, they will seek me early. We are being afflicted in hell by Satan. Pay attention. The devil has come down to us. We are the pit of hell. Pay attention. The most I said, Satan, from being, being Satan's realm. Pay attention. And be tormented. The Musa said, Come back to me. Come back to me. Second Maccabees 7 and verse 18. And after him also they brought the six who being ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves. Why being tormented? Be paid attention and dominated and put to death because we violated the laws of our God. Having sinned against our God and he turned it back, he turned out, take away our, protect, our protection. Pay attention. He took away your protection and lead the devil on us. Lead the devil on us. Pay attention. That way they're killing your left, right, and center. Up, up, as it is this day, you need to pay attention to you, Israelites. Right. They know who you are. They're hunting your steps. You need to pay attention. They are hunting your steps. Lamentations 4. Lamentations chapter 4. There's no anything under the sun. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 
17. As for our eyes, as yet fail for vain help. You see that? We seek him to be one help. We want help. We want reparations. Pay attention. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. Because the devil has come down unto you. Pay attention. They dare to torment you behind and punish you behind for violating of God's laws. They hunt our steps. Why are they hunting our brother's steps as from then? This is talking about what's 175 to 164. The Israelites and Mr. Sin. Pay attention. Repenting. Being going in sin, being delivered. Back, back into captivity for sin, being delivered. It's a recurring theme from the beginning of the Bible to the end. Pay attention. When you forsake your God, he punish you behind. He leaves Satan, he leaves Satan free hand on you. Pay attention. And what? As he, be, he has free hand on us right now, we're in hell. You are so right. Your captivity is hell. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. As they were doing the back in the day, back in Jerusalem, they're doing the same thing now. Be, once you commit a sin, the devil will hunt, hunt you behind. Pay attention and put it to death. Our end is near, our days are fulfilled up for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention and understand what time it is. Back to 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 20. And what? But the mother was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain, with the space of, slain within the space of one day, she bare it with a good courage because of the hope that she had in the Lord. Because she understood, they all understood, the father taught them. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courage of spirits, and stirring up her woman, womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell you how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath of nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world, the Mosai, who formed the generation of man and formed out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. Give you what? Eternal life again or immortality or everlasting life again. Again, back to God. So you need to pay attention. As you now regard, not your own selves for his law's sake. So you say what? You didn't care about what? Preserving in life. Preserving what? This sinful flesh. Pay attention for the law's sake. For giving precedence over the law. You pay attention. Giving sin precedence over the laws of God. You give the laws of God precedence over sin. Pay attention. She said, that's when we get everlasting life or eternal life. Back to God. Back to angels. Back to immortals. Pay attention. You need to pay attention what this book is about. Now, Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be reproachful speech, why is the youngest was yet alive, the last one was, was yet alive, he did what? Did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths that he would make him both a rich and a happy man. You see what? You, the youngest one, the last brother, he said, I will make you rich. Just bow down and worship me. What did Satan tell Magyar Ocean Luke 4 and 6? Bow down and worship me and I will give you all the power on this earth and all the glory. Well, what did Antiochus tell about the, young, the last brother? I will make you both a rich and happy man. Pay attention. So who is he? The devil himself. You need to pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. Just as Satan was tempting Eve, or pay attention, and he was tempting Yahushua, he tempting the last young brother. So he said, you don't have to just eat the pork. And, and come and worship me, I'll give you riches. Pay attention. Great God, Lord. And when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. He going after her, just as he went after Eve to take out Adam. Pay attention. He go after the mother to take out the son now. You need to pay attention. Go and tell him. <laughs> I will build him up. Go and tell him I'll give him money. Pay attention. But when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel the son. She said, yeah, I won't talk to him. But she bowed herself toward him, Laugh the cruel tyrant to scorn. She what? She laughed him to scorn. Speak, what did Bosha say? Kept the hands behind me, Satan. Pay attention. Luke 4. She spake in a country language, Hebrew, on this manner. O my son, have pity upon me that bear thee nine months in my womb. Admit she what? I carry nine months and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up unto this age and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon heaven and the earth and all that therein. And consider that God made them of things that were not, out of nothing. And so was mankind made likewise, out of nothing, the dust of the ground. Fear not this tormentor. She said what? Fear not this tormentor. Don't fear them. Pay attention. The Lord has not given the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. But being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. She said what? Don't worry. We go, we go we reunite, reunite in the heavenly realm. You need to understand. While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, who are you waiting for? <laughs> he turned and tell Antiochus, what are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? Do what you got to do. That's what he's saying. Do what you got to do. What are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's commandment. He's saying, why well, violate my, my God's laws? Pay attention. I will not obey the king's commandment. What you Israelites do now? Willfully violating God's laws. All his dietary laws, all his moral laws. All, pay attention. All his ceremonial laws. If you violate the midst of sin, you don't want to keep no law. 
but you're holy and you, you're saints and give, you, uh, people are crazy yourself. And the what? I will, but I will obey the commandment of the Lord that was given unto our fathers by Moses. He said, well, keep them laws. And thou that has been the author of all mischief. The what? The author of all mischief, according to 1 Maccabees 1 and 7, evils were multiplied in the earth. 1 Maccabees 1 and verse 9. And evils were multiplied in the earth. The author of what? All mischief. They never see these things on the earth done that was done under the Greeks. You need to pay attention. Scalping, tormenting, bowels, mangling, you need to pay attention. They never see that level of uh, evil. They never see that before. But what? Second Maccabees 7 and verse 29. Second Maccabees 7 and 29. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy burden, take thy debt, that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy burden. Don't you tell him, don't fear him. And what? And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. He tell him he's the what? Author of all mischief against the Israelites, the Hebrews. Pay attention. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shall not escape the hands of God. You will not what? Escape the hand of God. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. That's what you don't, don't understand. For we suffer because of our sins. We suffer because of what? Our sins. As we are suffering now because of what? Our sins. So you must return to your laws. So you can come and fight for you. Pay attention. Send the heavenly host to fight for you. Pay attention. And though they put it in all these movies and not paying attention. The war for the planet of the apes. They need to pay attention. All these movies, it's you they're talking about all the time. You're going to rule over them. They understand. The end of the movies, who went into the promised land? You need to pay attention. The, who they call apes and monkeys and the earth. You need to pay attention. It's talking about Israelites. You Israelites, you need to pay attention. You're watching the movies and being entertained. The Mosai is using them to wake you up, to show you. It's you I'm talking about. And they're making a mockery of you, but <laughs> the ones who have understanding will understand. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. Yet he shall be what? Reconciled to at one again. Why is he saying that? Go to John chapter 15 and verse John 15 and verse 27. And ye shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Yahweh shall say you will do and what I command you to do because you have been with me from the beginning. Your spirits have been with me in the heavenly realm. From the beginning, you're going to do what I tell, command you to do and you're going to testify where I command you to, to, to testify. Go and teach them. That's said the Lord, whether they hear, whether they forbear. Back to 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 33 and what he said and though the living lord be angry with us a little while as he is now for our chastening and correction the purpose is what to chasten and correction go to hebrews 12 and 6 for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth whom the lord what loveth he chasteneth and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children my son despise not the chastening of the lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him the paul is saying don't hate the, the curb, what we go through enjoy it enjoy it and come back to them laws now he's saying it's a rebuke of the Most High God laws for violating his for the Most High God for violating his laws. But for whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. Because you are my children, I will punish you behind and scourge it every son whom you receive it. I will put it through it to see whether you obey. So but he said, let's take it. Whatever you go through, you're going through hell and earth here on earth. Take it and come back to the laws and let's endure it. If you endure chastening, stipulation is if you take the beat down, God deal it with you as with sons. The most I say, I would because of purging the sin away. You have to pay for the sins you do. You have to purge it off. You have to burn it off. God delivered with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth on? What one of you, your father, never be done? Pay attention to your physical father. But if you be without chastisement, if you're going through life, you say, I'm a great lifestyle. Pay attention. I'm a great big mansion. Pay attention. My great feet of cars. Pay attention. Lamborghinis. Pay attention. Whatever cars, like, like toys, line my driveway. Massive mind mansions. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. You without chastening, if you be without chastisement, we have all our partakers, if he is a son of the Mosai, you must get chastised or go through hell. Then are you bastards and not son? You don't belong to the Mosai God. You are children of Satan. Satan thinks you. you look like you, Israelite. But Satan, they willingly worshiping Satan. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. understand what I mean. Is. Go back to, you were not with him from the beginning, in other words, because you love it here. You're getting your blessing right here. That's your blessing right here. You're going to die right here. Second Maccabees 8, 7, sorry, Second Maccabees 7 and verse 33. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while, oh, it's only for what? A little while. For our own chastening and correction, to correct us and bring us back to the law. Yet shall he be at one again with his servants, because we were with him from the beginning. The ones who were with him from the beginning, according to John 15, 27, they're going to return to them laws. They're going to endure, and enjoy to the end. Keep them laws. 
But thou, O godless man, and of all most wicked, he called him what? Antiochus, the godless and most wicked. The devil has come down, you need to pay attention. He said, what evils multiplied on earth and most wicked, be not lifted up or prideful without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes. He said, you're being prideful and arrogant, pay attention. Lifting up thy hand against the servants of God. You see that these heathen of God lifted up their hands against the servants of God and full of pride. <laughs> we conquer them. We doing them. You say what? Your time is coming. Your judgment is coming. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty God, who seeth all things. Because the Most High said, create good and evil. Sirach, Sirach chapter 33 and verse 14. Sirach 33 against 30, Sirach 33 and 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and they are two and two. He created everything in duality. One against another. One set against good, set against evil. The balance. Balance. So when the, the, you Israelites don't obey me, I will use the evil to punish you. You need to pay attention. <laughs> good against evil. Balance. And when you, you come back to me, they're done. I'm going to take them out. You need to pay attention. You're going to punish them. Balance. You need to pay attention. I will use you to punish them. Balance. Back to Second Maccabees 7 and verse 35. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, they are what? Only for a time. And are dead under God's covenant of everlasting life. Because to keep the laws to get what? Everlasting life. That we telling you. But thou, through the judgment of God, shall receive just punishment for thy pride. The Most High will judge the behind. These needed nations that oppress the Israelites will judge the behind. Pay attention. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our fathers. He said, what? Kill me. Beseeching God that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation and that thou art by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is God. So the most high by God has torment these hidden nations but by what? And by plagues. By, 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 but that by what? Torments and plagues he mayest confess that he alone is God. He's showing that I am God. What's happening to us in the last days? The devil has come down and he's tormenting and plaguing this, this kingdom. This beast kingdom. Pay attention. This fourth beast kingdom. Tormenting and plaguing them, that throwing them out, I'm the most high. I'm about to take them out. You need to pay attention. I'm about to deliver them. Torments and plagues. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our, our nation, may cease with the Israelites. Then the king, being in a rage, Antiochus, he came mad, handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. You see that? He got mad and he, he, this, he doing worse. So this man died undefiled. He kept the laws. And put his whole trust in the Lord. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. They put you to death and all. Pay attention, they kill them all. Because none of them, we ain't breaking the laws. No, no. Pay attention, as Eliza said, I ain't breaking the law. Kill, kill us all. Pay attention. They put father's son, the seven sons, and the mother to death. Pay attention. So it's establishing what? The devil has come down to you. Who does that? If a man be wanting to be lawful, or wanting to be upright and moral, there have to be a devil. Only a devil. <laughs> Pay attention. Because you want to promote immorality. Pay attention. Because he is what? Illogical. You pay attention. He's illogical. His cogitations will not be changed. His malice is bred in him. Do you need to pay attention? Spirits of malice. It's the spirits of malice. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12 and verse 10. But executing thy judgment upon them by little and by little, thou givest them place of repentance. The heathen, pay attention, but could they, could they repent? No, they can't repent. Not being ignorant that they were in, they were a naughty generation. They were what? A naughty generation. The devil has come down. Pay attention. And that their malice was bred in them. And that their cogitation will never be changed. But their faculties and the way of them, with the way of thinking, their perception cannot be changed. Pay attention because they're what? Bred for destruction. <laughs> they cannot be changed. They're what? A naughty generation. <laughs> you need to pay attention. Their malice. Malicious spirit, verse 22. Therefore, where was thou chasten us? We are in captivity, we are in hell, up, 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 as it is this day. Thou scourges our enemies, our, our, our oppressors, a thousand times more. A what? A thousand times more than what they're doing to you right now. You need to pay attention. The words I say, I'm going to scourge them what? A thousand times more than what they're doing to you. Go back to 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 37. And that by torments and plagues may us confess that he alone is God. By what? The most I can torment these nations as he's tormenting now, tormenting them now and plaguing them now. You need to pay attention to show them that I am the most like God. I am the God of the Israelites. You need to pay attention. And they are my people. I never forsake them. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. 
Then the king, being in a rage, handled him worse than all the rest. You see that he get mad, and he put them to death. He put them to death. He put them to death. He get mad. Go to Daniel chapter ten and verse thirteen. Daniel ten and thirteen. Daniel chapter ten, verse thirteen. Daniel ten and thirteen. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me, this is the angel talking to Daniel. The prince of the kingdom of Persia, when he's taken out of the Persian Empire, so the at every empire of this kingdom, the heavenly hosts come and take them down. Interpret them before the next empire rules. The kingdom of Median Persia, which stand him 21 days. But lo, Michael, Michael the archangel, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So the whole heavenly host come and take down this beast kingdom. So what's happening now? The heavenly host is what? Dismantling this beast kingdom, tormenting them, pay attention, and taking them apart. Pay attention for the deliverance of the Israelites. Pay attention. Now I am, he said what? Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. He said, Daniel will come and tell you what will happen in the latter days. And the vision is for many days. Go to, jump to verse 20. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? He said, Daniel, you understand when I come? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. He said, well, going back and battle him. To take out that beast kingdom. So every beast kingdom, the holy, the most high God sent his heavenly angels to take them out. You need to pay attention. The four horses, you need to pay attention. To take them out. And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone for it, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. The kingdom of the Greeks. Pay attention. So I come and take out East Beast Kingdom. So who? The prince of Grisha. The devil has come down to you again. Now we talk about First Maccabees 1. You need to pay attention. Send the devil to punish you behind. Because you're in hell. Isaiah 5 and 13. You're in hell. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5 and 13. What is hell? Therefore my people, the Israelites, are going into captivity, conquered on the earth from 70 AD, because they have no knowledge. They, they, they forsake my law. And their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged itself, and open the mouth without measure. You go into hell for violating God's laws. So the book coming against you when you go in hell, the devil to punish you behind. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Well, what, who's Antiochus Epiphanes? Who is Alexander the Greek? And who are they? These people, they say, who are these people that are punishing you behind? The devil has come down to you. You need to pay attention. You need hell being punished by Satan and his fallen angels and his minions. Pay attention. You see what? I wonder what? Back to Daniel 10 and verse 20. Then said he, Where thou there, wherefore I come? He said, Daniel, why you understand when I come? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone, lo, the, king, the prince of Grisha shall come. And I will show thee and that which is noted on the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth me in these things but Michael the prince. You see what? Michael the prince. So the heavenly host is come and take down these base kingdoms. So what's happening now? Pay attention. They're being dismantled. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. So go to Second Maccabees chapter 8 and verse 1. Second Maccabees 8 and verse 1. First Maccabees 8 and 1, sorry. 1 Maccabees 8 and 1. 1 Maccabees 8 and 1. And now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. Who? The Roman, the fourth beast kingdom. So the fourth beast kingdom, that's what we established. Because the Greeks, you say what? The devil has come down to you. And you, because we get Epiphanes, we see that wicked root and evils are multiplied in the earth. Go to, this is what? After the Romans followed what? The, the heavenly host, Michael and them take out what? The Medipotian. They take out the Greeks. Who coming out? The Romans. So after each beast kingdom, Israel is going sin, and send another beast to punish you behind. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in, with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child, cried, trafficking in birth and pain to be delivered. So this woman is talking about the Israelites. This woman is with the children of Israel. The twelve, the twelve tribes. We see that? The sun and the moon, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. The twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The similitude metaphors. And she being with child, she being with what? Child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A what? A great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. The great red dragon, Revelation 12 and 9. Who is this great red dragon? And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Who is the devil and Satan? Who is he talking about? The devil and Satan. Pay attention. 
the devil has come down. Pay attention. Back to verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, the devil and Satan, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. The attributes, you need to pay attention, of this dragon, you need to pay attention. You're talking about who? The seven, the, why, why, these, this beast kingdom is the G7 and the G10. You need to pay attention. The seven mountains of Rome, pay attention. It's talking about the Roman Empire. You need to pay attention. You call them who? The devil. The great dragon, the devil. And Satan. To punish you as well. It's for violating God, Lord. That woman with 12, with the, the, the sun and the moon on her head and under her feet, and upon her head a crown, 12 stars. The Israelites, the 12 tribes. The devil is going to be punishing her behind. And what? And his tail drew the third part of the stars of him, the devil and his fallen angels, and did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. Who is this woman? For to devour her child as soon as it was born. Go to Matthew chapter 2. And go to Matthew chapter 2. That devil stood before, before this woman to devour her child when it was born. Who is this child? Matthew 2 and 1. Now when Yahushua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Who? Herod the king of the Roman beast kingdom. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? The wise men came to look for Yahushua, where, where he is. For we have seen his star. They, see, they say, we've seen his star. He born. Because it's talking about angels. We need to pay attention. Pay, pay attention. What are they, they talking about these stars? It's angels. We have seen his star in, his east, in the east, and I come to worship him. We come to, to find the king. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled with, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Mashiach should be born. He said, where is he? Pay attention. Where is he? Why? Because what? And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among thy princes, princes, and not the least among thy princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Matthew 2 and verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. So the angel appeared to Mary and Joseph, and said, What? Take the baby Yahushua and run. Go into where? Egypt, on the land of Ham. Go, pay attention. That was part of the land of Ham, but he said, Go further in the land of Ham, and hide be between them, the children of Ham. And be thou there until I bring thee wood. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him, because they were what? There was there were Israelites in, 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 um, in, in, in the land of Egypt. Pay attention. In Alexandria, within Israel, there were massive settlements of the Israelites who were there. But they say, go and hide between among them. Go and hide among them. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Go and hide among people that look like you. Pay attention. Because Herod was seeking him to put him to death. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Joseph went. And, there was, and they were there until the death of Herod. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw he, that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrought, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under. He put to death all them children, two years old and younger. The devil has come down unto you. You need to pay attention. He said, called that great red dragon, called the devil and Satan. Back to Revelation 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. Pay attention. Call who? Revelation 9, 12 and 9. The great dragon was cast out. That old super, that great dragon, red dragon, called the devil and Satan. You can pay attention. You need to pay attention. Red is blood through water out of his skin. You need to pay attention. You need to understand what time it is. Called the devil and Satan, which what deceived the whole world. He's a deceiver. Because you're speaking what? Piece of words. With deceitfully. What's the, what's the one from, from Alexander come out to you? Because speaking what? Piece of words. Deceitfully. Killing you behind. Pay attention. Coming in peace and decimating you. Pay attention. Back to Revelation 12 and 5. And he stood what? For to devour a child as soon as he was born. He's talking about the Yahushua. Pay attention. He's talking about Herod. The fourth beast kingdom. He called him Lord, the devil. And his fallen angel. Pay attention. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Yahushua. He come to what? Rule all nations. Rule, rule them with a rod of iron. Authority and power. Pay attention. And the child was caught up unto God and to his children. When they crucified him, he went back to the Father. He came and do his purpose. Become the Lamb of God. Give us grace and faith. That, that was the purpose of him, his blood. To give us grace and faith. Take away animal sacrifice. Give the Israelites grace and faith. Because you know, you say all about, all about to go into a long captivity. No temple to sacrifice. Pay attention. So they, I have to done with animal sacrifice. No killing. No, no, no sheep. No nothing. No killing. No sacrifice. No blood for me. You go in the other grace and faith now. Come back and keep them laws. Animal sacrifice is done. He said that. That's the purpose of him, God, come in and die. Because it was a great mystery. And he went back to the Father. I come and give you a, a ticket out. Pay attention. And the woman fled into the wilderness, the Israelites, going into captivity. 
where she had a place prepared of God into captivity, that they should feed her. Who? The oppressors should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. The oppressors will feed us in our captivity. Pay attention. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon because it's ordained of the Most High God. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The heavenly host did what? Fight against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. So they always battle against evil. Good is set against evil. And prevail not. So he obviously he can't win. Neither was there place found anymore in heaven. So he could not. No place found in heaven. He couldn't be going through and forth again. And prevail not. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out of heaven. Pay attention. Into the earth. This is this, this, this dwelling. And dominion. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Satan and his fallen angels. Ruling. ruling. And this is their realm. The hell is their heaven. So we cast out into their heaven. Which is our hell. The Israelites. For violation of the most I got lost. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now it's come salvation. But after you put your punishment or being cast into hell comes what? Salvation. Your, or your deliverance. What did the Maccabees brother say? He said, don't be all the prideful and arrogance. Your judgment is coming on the most side. You see, Auntie, because you see, you wicked as hell, you do your thing because your judgment is coming. Pay attention. As you do to us, you get in. But what? With Revelation 12 and 10, now it's come salvation. Your deliverance from your hell, you Israelites, and strength back to power or rulership and the kingdom of our God. The kingdom of God is where we're going to be delivered into or saved into. Who come back to the laws? Pay attention. Back to our heavenly realm. Pay attention. Or out of hell or the pit of hell. And the power of Ms. Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren, the devil, is cast down. The devil, he's the accuser of the Israelites. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. No, who, so who is Antiochus the Who is Antiochus the Epiphanes? Who is Alexander the Greek? Who is Herod? Who are these, these beast kingdoms? They are the accuser of the brethren. Pay attention. Which accuse them before our God day and night. Keep in sin. Set in sin. Leave the laws of your God and only lascivious lifestyle and lust and violation of God's laws. Give it drugs to sell. Give it guns to kill each other. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. And deceive me behind to take your soul out. They are the accuser of your brethren. Pay attention. That which accuse them before our God day and night. They relentlessly pursue your soul. Pay attention. But the most I say, I would let them try behind so you see if you go obey me and overcome. And they overcame him. The Israelites God, the elect of God will what? Overcome him. Or the remnant will overcome him. By what? By the blood of the Lamb. The grace that Yahusha gave them by John 1 29. Behold, the Lamb of God will take away the sin of the world. Yahusha will be in the Lamb that shed his blood. Pay attention. Give you grace to repent and come back to them laws. So they're going to overcome him by coming back to the laws under grace and faith. Not doing nothing under grace and faith. Pay attention. I'm talking about the children of God. Pay attention. And by the word of the testimony, by the word of the testimony, the prophets testify from Genesis to Revelation. You're going to do them laws, that is commandments. You're going to repent and confess and forsake your sins, as the seven brothers in Maccabees said. They kept them laws. They're going to keep them laws. Pay attention to overcome the devil. Antiochus, you, yeah, man, you can only kill the flesh. What are we talking about? You can only kill the flesh. I would overcome you by keeping the laws. Pay attention. The overcoming by the blood of the Lamb, utilizing the grace, and by the word of the testimony. Keeping the laws. Come back to the laws. Repenting. Except you repent, you go perish. That way, I wish I keep saying. And they love not their lives unto the death. They love what? Not their life. Their sinful life. That we say, they don't love this. This will mean nothing to you. Take it. That we, the, brother, the, the seven brother tell him in, in, in Second Maccabees 7. Take that. That don't mean nothing to me. They what? They love not their lives unto the death. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse. Second Maccabees 7 and verse 37. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of the forefathers. <laughs> yeah, now, what's this? I'm going to give a rest behind about this. I offer that up. Take that. Pay attention. Kill the sinful, the sinful body, the flesh. You can kill the flesh, but you can't kill the soul. Let me say. You say, I love this. You do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Back to Revelation 12 and 11. And they love not their lives until the death. Or is what I better love a life. We love it here. I like myself. I was in the world. Pay attention. Glitz and glamour. Back in the day. Lost in the source. Love, love yourself. Pay attention. Not the niece used to call me love is like myself. Love myself. Yeah, pay attention. You like yourself. Look like myself. Come. Because you're well decked up. You're well dressed up. You're looking bad. You're looking nice. Yeah. In the midst of sin. To do what? Entice your sisters. Pay attention. To keep them in lust and fornication. Pay attention. The most I say what? They love not their life. They have to overcome him. Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcome him. That lust and the temptation and the fornicating lifestyle. And the serious lifestyle. And they overcome it by the blood of the Lamb. Coming, utilizing the grace. And by the word of the testimony, applying the laws. Come back to the laws. When you understand, you're going to apply the laws. No, um, no more fornication. No more adultery. Stop committing sin. Stop lying. Stop thieving. Stop being a, a murderer. Stop being a drug dealer. Stop being a hitman. Stop being a... Pay attention. 
Stop being violating God's laws, you're going to overcome the devil because of the devil keeping it violating God's laws, keeping it in sin, in other words. And they love not their lives until they let love it. We don't love this here. Forget this. This is wickedness. This is hell. This is evil as hell. As a, a young kid, I used to understand this something wrong, something in right here. This ain't right. Something I was seven years, <laughs> eight years, young, and something. This ain't right. Something ain't right. My spirit always knew something wasn't right here. I don't belong here. Me and a younger sibling had always had a conversation <laughs> from seven, eight, nine, ten years coming up. Something ain't right. We don't belong here. We don't something ain't right. Pay attention. Because the spirit was identifying something in right. And what to overcome this, this, this realm, this hell, by the word of the testament, keep, come back and keep them laws and love not their lives unto death. They will give up this life. This is sin. This is sin that leads to death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Rejoice you what? The heavenly host and them that dwell in the heaven. Pay attention. Who, who dwell in heaven? The heavenly host and the angels and the most high God and, his ho and the heavenly host. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The, he said, destruction to the what? Inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you. Pay attention. What did Yahushua say in Luke 10 and 18? I see Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Pay attention. <laughs> the, the demon, demon vanguard saying, it doesn't happen here. This doesn't happen here. The devil ain't come down here. Pay attention. There's Satan himself, Satan fallen angels. Pay attention. The, 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 the most I say, the revelators say, the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath because he knew that he had but a, little, a short time. It, pay attention. He come down unto you, knowing what he had but a short time, he's about to be destroyed. You need to pay attention. So you go in what? Full throttle in, to, to, to kill left, right, and center, keeping in sin. That's why so much murder is on the earth right now, and rampant like you never seen. You never could have fought him in your lifetime seeing this thing. Because the hell he going and rot, you know you're about to be destroyed. Pay attention because the Musa is plaguing him, plaguing him, and tormenting him meticulously and calculating him, taking him out. Pay attention. He's trying to take out as much of you as your life as he could. Soul. Pay attention. The devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. He mad because he knew that he had but a short time. So, so, so from, from um, <laughs> um, the, the land, the, what, the Greek beast kingdom come, he said evil is multiplied on the earth. They're going into the next level of evil. And they started to take out because they, about, they understand they're about to be destroyed. So they take another much of years to let us come. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman and that brought for the, the man child. The Israelites. The Israelites. That, that, that verse 4 talking about. And he stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. As he stood before Mary, and he's talking about verse 1, the woman is who? The Israelite. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. He's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. He's going to persecute the 12 tribes of Israel, which had delivered into his hand for sin. And what? And he persecuted the woman, which had brought forth the man child. He says, Mary, that was, I say, take the outro and run. He's talking about the Israelites. Genesis 3 and 15. I put, will put enmity between thee and the woman. Genesis 3 15. And I will put enmity or friction between thee, you Satan, and the woman. Which this woman is talking about who? Eve or the nation of Israel. Pay attention. And between thy seed, Satan's seed, which is Cain, and her seed, which is Abel, which is Adam's seed. It's not her seed, it's not the woman, the woman who planted the seed. Adam planted the seed. When they say her seed, it's talking about the nation of Israel, the Israelites, the children of God coming through Adam. Adam's seed. Pay attention. So the, the Satan's seed on the earth will be warned against Adam's seed. You need to pay attention. All Satan's seed on Satan's churn on the earth will be warned against the most high God churn, the churn of God. You need to pay attention. It's come down today to be the Israelites. Back to Revelation 12 and 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away to the flood, lies and disease and deception. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was roared to the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of his seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Yahushua. So he's targeting who? The ones who remnant who keep them, them commandments. He make, went to make what? War. Pay attention. Don't keep them laws. Pay attention. Violate God's laws. Keep you in sin. He will throw more sin at you. That's what he's talking about. He throw more, more sin. He meant to make, more, meant to make war. He went to make war. Read this book is called The Thirteen Tribe. Arta Kosla, the Thirteen Tribe. The Thirteen Tribe. By Arta Kosla. This is a book I had this book many, 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 many years. <laughs> many years. I read from page page thirteen. The country of the Khazars. A people of Turkish stock. The Khazars or Khazarian is a people of what? Turkish stock. Turkish heritage. Occupied a strategic key position at the vital gateway between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, Eastern Europe. 
where the great eastern powers of the period confronted each other. Each other. It acted as a buffer protecting Byzantium invasion against sorry, it protected as a buffer protecting Byzantium against invasions by the lusty barbarian tribesmen of the northern steppes, the Bulgars, Magyars, Pechenegs, etc. And later the Vikings and the Russians. So it was protecting the, the Byzantium Empire or Constantinople from attacks. So it was in between them. Read the Khazar country. Sorry, let's read that little piece before. The Khazar armies effectively blocked the Arab avalanche in its most devastating early stages and thus prevented the Muslim conquest of Eastern Europe. So they were instrumental in preventing what? The Muslim conquest, totally conquering Eastern Europe. Professor Dunlop of Columbia University, a leading authority on the history of the Khazars, has given a concise summary of this decisive yet virtual unknown episode. He's talking about that. Um, it is perhaps not surprising, given these circumstances, that in 732, after a resounding Khazar victory over the Arabs, the future emperor Constantine V married a Khazar princess. Emperor Constantine V was who? An emperor of who? Rome. You need to pay attention. The Eastern Roman Empire. You need to pay attention. Emperor Constantine V married a Khazar princess. In due time, could they make allegiances because the Khazar helped them fight off the Arabs. So they make allegiances. And the emperor, sorry, and in due time, their son became the emperor, Leo IV, the emperor of Rome, Leo IV, known as Leo the Khazar. You see that? Leo the Khazar, because his mother was Khazar, Khazarian. And he became what? The emperor of Rome. Ironically, the last battle in the war, AD seven thirty seven, ended in a Khazar defeat. Ended in what? A Khazar defeat. But by the time the impetus of the Muslim holy war was spent, the caliphate was rocked by internal dissensions, and the Arab invasion, invaders retraced their steps across the Caucasus without having gained a permanent foothold in the north. Whereas the Khazars became more powerful than they had previously been. A few years later, probably AD seven forty. The king, his court, and the military ruling class embraced the Jewish faith. They did what? The king, his court, and the military ruling class embraced the Jewish faith. They what? Embraced the Jewish faith and Judaism. And they did what? They embraced it, converted, and became the and sorry, and Judaism became the state religion of the Khazars. So they took it around what? 740 AD. Around 740 AD, they converted and into Judaism. Pay attention. No doubt the contemporaries were astonished by this decision as modern scholars were when they came across the evidence in the Arab, Byzantine, Russian, and Hebrew sources. They get it from what? Arab sources, because everybody keep the records. The kings always keep the records. So the Arab, the Byzantine, the Russian, and the Hebrew, all them sources have records. So everybody was shocked. How could they convert to Judaism? Pay attention. What is the reason behind it? On one of the most recent comments, it is found in a work by the Hungarian Marxist historian, Dr. Antal Bata, his book, The Magyar Society, in the 8th and 9th centuries, has several chapters on the Khazars, as during most of that period, the Hungarians were ruled by them. Yet the conversion to Judaism is discussed in a single paragraph, and with obvious embarrassment. It reads, Our investigations cannot go into the problems put into the history of ideas, but we must call the reader's attention to the matter of the Khazars kingdom, State religion. It was the Jewish faith which became the official religion of the ruling strata of society. Needless to say, the acceptance of the Jewish faith as the state religion of an ethnically non-Jewish people. Of a what? Ethnically non-Jewish people. They're not the Jews. <laughs> Pay attention. So they what? Convert. They convert into a nationality. Pay attention. They could not be the subject of interesting speculation. We shall, however, confine ourselves to the remark that this official conversion, in defiance of Christian proselytizing by Byzantium, which is Rome, the Muslim or the Greco-Roman Empire, the Muslim influence from the East, 
because the Romans absorbed the Greeks, pay attention, become one, amalgamated with them, with them take over the kingdom and, and absorb them into them. The, so when you hear the Eastern Roman Empire and the Western Roman Empire, Eastern Roman Empire, Byzantium, or Constantinople, the Muslim influence from the East and in spite of the political pressure of these two powers, to a religion which had no support from any political power, so they, they, they took up Judaism, but was persecuted by nearly all. The Jews were what? Persecuted by nearly all, because from 70 AD, Titus and Vespasian, what sacked Jerusalem and they carried the Israelites all over the earth. Pay attention, they had them where? All over. In Byzantium, wherever. So the, where, where did they get to adopt this, this Judaism from? The Jews that they had conquered, that, 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 that they had there, pay attention, dwelling among them, they, they had to practice their religion. You need to pay attention. That was what? Persecuted by all. They, they were persecuted by what? By all. By nearly all, sorry has come as a surprise to all this history. They said that the people that was persecuted by nearly all peoples, it come like as a surprise. Why would they convert to their, their national, their, their, their religion, to their customs? Why would they convert to their customs or their nationality? It's not a, it's not a religion, it's a nationality. <laughs> the laws of God is a nationality. The Israelites is a nationality. But had no support for any political power. But was persecuted by nearly all. It has come as a surprise to all historians concerning the Khazars and cannot be considered as accidental. He said, what? That conversion, it cannot be considered as accidental. He says, no accident. Why would they want to, to choose a religion that, but the people have been persecuted the most? There's, uh, some, there's, uh, there's something greater behind it. That we say, it's not an accident, but must be regarded as a sign of the independent policy pursued by that kingdom. It's an independent what? Policy. There's a, ply, a plot behind it, or a ploy behind it. You need to pay attention. I'm going to take your identity. You need to pay attention. I'm going to hide who you are. I'm going to take your, your identity. Which leaves us only slightly more bewildered than before because they didn't understand then. Because they bewildered, they bewildered because the intent was to take, it and take your identity. So pay attention. Identity theft? Pay attention. You see, because it's not accidental and they couldn't un understand it. Why they did that? What is in dispute is the fate of the Jewish Khazars after the destruction of the empire. He said, what is where, where they go? Where did they went? Where did they go? Where did the Khazarians go? Where did these Jewish Khazarians go after the empire fell? In the 12th or 13th century, they, they were decimated in the 12th or 13th century because there was a power, a powerhouse. Back there was the Christians, the Muslims, and then was about the third power, superpower at that time. But what? On this problem, the sources are scanned. They disappear. Nobody knows where they are all of a sudden. You see, they disappear. But what? The sources are what? Scanned. Nobody knows where they went. But various late medieval Khazar settlements are mentioned in Crimea. They mentioned in where? Crimea. In the Ukraine, in Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. You see that? You see what? They have settlements where? They find them. Mentioned there. Crimea, Ukraine, Hungary, Poland, and Lithuania. The general picture that emerges from these fragmentary pieces of information is that of a migration of Khazar tribes and communities into those regions of Eastern Europe. They, they say what? They migrate into those Eastern, of Eastern Europe from the land of Khazaria. Because when they get taken up, mainly Russia and Poland, mainly where? Into Russia and Poland, where at the dawn of the modern age, the greatest concentrations of Jews were formed. Of who? Jews were formed. Pay attention. This had led several historians to conjecture that a substantial part and perhaps the majority of Eastern Jews and hence of world Jewry might be of Khazar and not of Semitic origin. He said the vast majority led historians to believe that the, the substantial part of the majority of them, these Eastern Jews, are Khazars, and not of what? Semitic or Shemitic. They're not, they're not the children of Shem. Pay attention. He said they're not the children of Shem, but what of Khazar heritage? Pay attention. The majority of them that exist. So who do they have among them? The children of Shem. Who were they emulating? The children of Shem. Whose religion or, 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 or customs they, 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 they converted to? The children of Shem. You need to pay attention. <laughs> you see what? But they understand it. So the majority of them is that true? The most I say, the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea. The Israelites, who were scattered from 70 AD, will be as the sand of the sea. So when they were scattered away all throughout Europe, through Russia, through all these countries in Crimea, Crimea. Pay attention. They were all over because why they were conquered and scattered by the Roman, the Byzantine Empire. You need to pay attention. By the Greeks, same thing. You need to pay attention. The far-reaching implication of this hypothesis may explain the great caution exercised by historians in approaching this subject. They were cautiously approaching it, approaching it because they don't have full understanding. If they do not avoid it altogether, they what? Avoid dealing with that altogether. 
because they're saying the vast majority of them is of Khazar origin and not of Shemitic origin. They're not the children of Shem. Pay attention, but they're Khazarian converts. They're not the Shem. So who's the children of Shem? You need to pay attention. <laughs> Because the children of Shem, why could they say that the children of Shem do not look like them? These are, you see that these are European, the children of Shem do not look like them. Pay attention. It's two different things happening. The, thus, in the 19th century, century edition of the Encyclopedia Judaica, the article Khazars is signed by Dunlop. But there is a separate section dealing with Khazar Jews after the fall of the kingdom. Signed by the editors and written with obvious intent to avoid upsetting believers in the dogma of the chosen race. He said that they write the article, they don't want to upset believers in the dogma of the chosen race. Everybody believe they're the chosen race. Pay attention. So they don't want to upset them. So they avoid <laughs> writing, writing, writing this article. The Turkish speakers, the, sorry, the Turkish speaking Karits, a fundamental, fundamentalist Jewish sect of Crimea and Poland, they are who the Turkish Turkish speaking Karaites, these are Khazars, of the Crimea, Poland, and elsewhere have affirmed a connection with the Khazars. These one, what? They have affirmed or confirmed that they are connected to the Khazars. Pay attention. Their forefathers, pay attention. Which is perhaps confirmed by evidence from folklore and anthropology, anthropology as well as language. Similar language. Pay attention to Yiddish. Similar language is speaking. There seems to be considerable amount of evidence attesting to the continued presence in Europe of descendants of the Khazars, they, they're here still. Masking, why are they hiding? Who they are? You need to pay attention. Because they take somebody else's identity. You need to pay attention. How important in quantitative terms is that presence of the Caucasian sons of Japheth in the tents of Shem? <laughs> the, the what? The Caucasian sons of Japheth in the tents of Shem. He call them, they call them what? The Khazars are what? Caucasians. Pay attention. You see what? It's ironic that they what? In the tents of Shem. They said that we are the, the Shemites. <laughs> it's two different people standing. One is Caucasian, and why in the tense of who? Shem. Who is Shem? You need to pay attention. He said the Caucasian sons of Japheth. Why do you specify Caucasian sons of Japheth in the tense of Shem? They have also your identity. Pay attention. One of the most radical propounders of the hypothesis concerning the Khazar origins of Jewry is the professor of medieval Jewish history at Tel Aviv University, A. N. Poliak. His book, Khazaria, in Hebrew, was published in 1944 in Tel Aviv, and a second edition in 1951. In his introduction, he writes that the facts demand, in the fact demand a new approach both to the problem of the relation between the Khazar Jewry and other Jewish communities, and to the question of how far we can go in regarding this Khazar Jewry, as the nucleus of the large Jewish settlement in Eastern Europe. The descendants of this settlement, those who stayed where they were, those who emigrated to the United States and to other countries and those who went to Israel constitute now the large majority of world Jewry. They, were, what, they went to Israel where? 1948. Pay attention by the United Nations, the Balfour Declaration. Pay attention. So you're telling it? Some went to Israel by the... <laughs> they need to pay attention by the Balfour, the Balfour Declaration, United Nations, sending them there. And who? Some went to the United States. Pay attention. And migrated to other countries. They are the descendants of the Eastern European Khazar Jewry. Pay attention. They're not the children of Shem. The children of Shem was scattered from since 1780, scattered throughout the earth. You need to pay attention. This was written before the full extent of the Holocaust was known, but that does not alter the fact that the large majority of surviving Jews in the world is of European, is of European, of East, is, sorry, is of Eastern European, and thus perhaps mainly because of origin. If so, this would mean that their ancestors came not from Jordan. They, we say what if that if the, <laughs> it was, means what their ancestors came not from Jordan. But what? But from the Volga. From where? The Volga, Eastern Europe. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. Not from the land of Canaan, but from Caucasus, because they're getting cancer, skin cancer in the land of Canaan. You need to pay attention. Not from Canaan, but from the Caucasus. Once believed to be the cradle of Aryan race. Of the what? The Aryan race. They're the Aryans. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. <laughs> the Aryan race. And that genetically, they are more closely related to the Hun. To the what? The Hun, Attila the Hun, you need to pay attention, the Uga and the Magia tribes, down to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Pay attention. He says what? They are the, of the what? The Hun, the Uga, and the Magia tribes, Eastern European, down to who? The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is the, from the Kenan, the, the Shemites, Shem Shem. Pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. No, that's why they put this man to death. You need to pay attention. 
should this turn out to be the case, then the term anti-Semitism or anti-Semitism would become void of meaning. He said, what? It'd be one word, void. <laughs> You're not the churn Hashem, so how can you be anti-Semitic to you? Pay attention. When the churn Hashem scattered and being conquered and hated of all and persecuted of all, pay attention. Don't know who they are in the midst of sin. Pay attention. And would become void of meaning. Because the most I say, what? I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. I'm going to reveal things. You need to pay attention. Because I'm what? Judging this beast kingdom. I'm about to decimate it. I'm about to what? Deliver the children of Israel. Your, your salvation right now. That's what it's saying. I will reveal secrets that kept, things that be kept secret from the foundation of the world. Should this turn out to be true, then the case anti-Semitism would have, would, would become void of meaning based on a misapprehension shared by both the killers and their victims. Who? The killers and the victims, the Israelites, the, the pay attention, the children of Shem and the oppressors, you need to pay attention. Because somebody is usurping at their identity. The story of the Kaza Empire, as it slowly emerges from the past, begins to look like the most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. He said it looks like the what? The most cruel hoax that what? History has perpetrated. Because the rulers and the conquerors, the devil has come down, they've what, taught history, they re they rebrand history, change names, change identities, pay attention, trade places, they've changed nationalities. Because the devil has come down to you, Satan ruling over you. It begins to be what? The most cruel hoax which history has ever perpetrated. The most cruel hoax. Go to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 29. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 29. Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee? O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellence? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. And thou shalt tread upon the high places. You see that? <laughs> Moses saying, the enemy shall be found what? Liars. And you shall what? Tread upon the high places. You're going to dominate them and rule over them. Thus said the Lord. Because you are the people that are going to be saved of the Lord. That with um, Revelation 12 and 12 is talking about the salvation. Then come to salvation. Then come to salvation. Revelation chapter 12 and verse, verse. Revelation 12 and 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, the heavenly kingdom, and the power of his Mashiach, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Pay attention. It's your salvation is drawing nice, so your accuser is being cast down. He's being cast down, revealed in front of you. Pay attention. The accuser of the brethren or the devil is being cast down. Psalms 85, 11. Psalms chapter 85, verse 11. Psalms 85 and 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The what? The truth is springing out from the earth. It's being revealed. The truth is being revealed in the earth. Pay attention. Back to the, the 13 tribe. Until the 9th century, the Khazars had no rivals to their supremacy in the regions north of the Black Sea. They had what? No rivalry. And the adjoining step for its region of the, the Nepia. Pay attention. The Nepia. The Khazars were the supreme masters. Where's all this war raging right now? You need to pay attention. <laughs> the Khazars were the supreme masters of the southern half of Eastern Europe for a century and a half. They dominated the, the southern half of Eastern Europe for a century and a half. And a half. Pay attention. They were a bad army. The Khazar kingdom occupies an intermediate, intermediary position in time and size and degree of civilization between the Hun and Ava empires, which preceded, which preceded and the Mongol empire that succeeded it, succeeded it. But who were these remarkable people? Remarkable as much as by their power and achievement as by their conversion to a religion of outcasts. They, were, they converted to a religion of what? A people that was outcasts. Pay attention. They say they're remarkable as much by their power and achievement as by the, they said that they didn't compare the power that they had, how they converted a, a religion of all caste. A people that what caste from 70 now the Israelites. The Israelites, so tell me what? They are not the Israelites. Pay attention. The description have come down to us originate in hostile sources and cannot be taken at face value. You see that? Who is this outcast? Go to um, Isaiah 11 and 11. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. Who is this outcast that they converted into them? 
Isaiah 11 and 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again another time, the second time, to recover the remnant of his people and shall, that shall be left from Assyria. The people that came out of the Assyrian captivity when the northern this Assyrian king came and take, conquered the northern ten tribes, Samanessa, and from Egypt, the people that came out of Egypt under Pharaoh, the Israelites, and from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from the Shina, and from the Hamat, and from the islands of the sea, where he scattered again in the diaspora. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. The outcasts, plural, of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel. He come into what? Gather us, a second exodus, second exodus, mass exodus. And gather together the dispose of Judah, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, twelve tribes, from the four corners of the earth, where I scatter them. Pay attention, we scatter us unto this day. In every what? This kingdom, the Israelites are going to be in, in subjugation or servitude for sin, for violation of the laws of God. And so they repent and confess and cry to the Lord. And he said to heavenly host to smash these beasts, to smash these devils. Pay attention. Take them out. You need to pay attention. As we are witnessing now, they've been clinically dis dis dismantled. Pay attention. End of an empire. You need to pay attention. Or the reset, the end of an age. You need to pay attention. That's why we're here. You need to pay attention. The outcast, Romans 9 and 22. Read Romans 9 verse 22. Romans 9 and 22 to 27. Romans 9 verse 22. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? They are the what? Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction because the devil has come down. The children of Satan, <laughs> Satan is four angels and their children. They are vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. They meet with destruction. They're going to punish the Israelites until the Israelites cry out to their God, come and bring salvation, and deliver them, and destroy them. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, the Israelites. Mercy to them. Pay attention. Which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Not of the southern kingdom. When he said Jews, it's talking about the southern kingdom of Judah. And also the Gentiles, the northern kingdom of Israel, the northern ten tribes. They call them Gentiles, heathen. They call them um, Gentiles, heathen, uncircumcision, Greek. Oh, because they live in like the heathen, the Mr. Sin and the northern ten tribes. <laughs> Evil as hell. So they refer to them as Gentiles. Oh, and he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, which I cast off, and her beloved, which was not beloved. You see that? Well, I cast off in hell for punishment. No, <laughs> I will call them. They are my children. And it shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, you are outcasts, there shall they be called the children of the living God. And what I say, they will be called what? The living of <laughs> they are my children, the children of the living God. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, we are the most numerous people on the, on, the, on the earth, or innumerable, a remnant shall be saved. The remnant is going to return to the law. The majority of Israel is going to die because they love sin, they love it here. Pay attention. The love, the glitz and the glamour that the devil is even behind and training and making it look as a glorious, <laughs> beautiful place. Pay attention. Well, pay attention, my great lifestyle. You're going to die right here. <laughs> pay attention. The remnant going to be saved who can return to the laws of their God. Back to the, the 13 tribe by Atakosla, page 19. But who are these remarkable people? Be the Kazars, remarkable as much by their power and achievement as by their conversion or converts to a religion of outcasts. The converted Israelite religion, pay attention. Or our nationality, not in this case, they stole our nationality, our identity, and say they are us. Pay attention. The outcasts or the dispersed of Judah and Israel. The description that have come down to us originate in hostile sources and cannot be taken at face value. As to the Kazars, an Arab chronicler writes, this, this is a context from an Arab who keep in, keeping records, the chronicle and the history. They are to the north of the inhabited earth towards the seventh clime, having over their head the constellation of the plough. Their land is cold and wet. Accordingly, their complexions are white. They are what? White in complexion. Their eyes blue. They are what? Eyes blue. You need to pay attention. Their hair flowing and predominantly reddish. He's describing what these cousins are. He pay attention. So that we see, they can be the, the Canaanites. But they can be the ex old cast or the children of God. Their bodies large and their natures cold. They what? Natures cold, cold blooded. Their general aspect is wild. After a century of warfare, the Arab writer obviously had no great sympathy for the Khazars. <laughs> Nor had the Georgian or Armenian scribes. So all these different scribes were writing accounts of what is happening. Whose countries of a much older culture had been repeatedly devastated by Khazar horsemen. 
a Georgian chronicle echoing an ancient tradition identifies them with the hosts of Gog and Magog. He identified with who? The hosts of Gog and Magog. The armies of Gog and Magog. Pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. It's a people. You need to pay attention. Wild men and hideous faces and the man of wild beasts. Eaters of blood. They what? Eaters of blood. Give me that red pottage. What did Esau ask Jacob for? Give me that Genesis 25. Give me that red pottage. I'm hungry. <laughs> Give me some of that red meat. Rare meat. Rare meat. He was asking for raw meat to eat. You need to pay attention. It's a new raw meat. Genesis chapter 25 and verse. Genesis 25 and 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, or Red, or the Red Man. The Red, because it means his blood through for his skin. And he wants that red meat. Hebrews 12 and 16. There is no profane person than, or fornicator profane person than Esau, who for one morsel of meat, pay attention, sold his boat, right? One morsel of what? Red meat, red pottage, rare meat. It wasn't cooked. Pay attention. They, saw, they was cooking the food and it was raw. And he said, Give me it, I'm hungry. That's the characteristics. That's what we are reading here. Go back to the 13 tribe. He said, What? They're accordingly the complexions are white. They, they say white is talking about what? They talk about red and the blood should fall to the skin. Their eyes blue, their hair flowing. There's no such thing as a white person. What blood red, the red man, blood should fall to his skin. Their eyes blue, that's what uh, the Genesis is describing who the character is Esau. The red, red, Edom, red means red, the red man on the earth. Pay attention. <laughs> they call it the Indians red. And they said no. They, they are the ones that blood should fall to their skin. Their complexion white or the red man, their eyes blue, they have flowing and predominantly reddish. Their bodies large and the natives cold. Good, um, they could identify them. A Georgian chronicle echoing an ancient tradition identifies them with the host of Gog and Magog. Pay attention, you're gonna understand who this, who this Gog and Magog is. Wild men with hideous faces and the manners of wild beasts, eaters of blood. They were what? Eaters of blood. Just as Esau. Give me that red potato, that rare meat, blood. And I mean as they do to this day, rare steak, rare this, rare that. You need to pay attention, not half, medium rare. You need to pay attention. The Israelites were forbidden to eat blood. An Armenian writer refers to the horrible multitude of Khazar with insolent, broad, lashless, lash, lashless faces and long fallen hair like women. Lastly, the Arab, the Arab geographer Istakri, one of the main Arab sources, has this to say. The Khazars do not resemble the Turks. They are black-haired and are of two kinds. One called the Kara Khazars, meaning what? Black Khazars. They are what? Kara Khazars or Black Khazars who are swarthy. They are what? Swarthy. Virgin and deep black. They are what? Virgin and deep black. So you see some of them, they are made of what? Two kinds. One is called Kara Khazars or Black Khazars and are swarthy and are very deep black as if they were a kind of an Indian, as if they were a kind of an Indian and a white kind, Ak Khazars, who were strikingly handsome. These ones is a white kind and a swarthy or deep black kind. The Israelites are scattered into what? All nations. Who did they get to emulate or, or, or fashion their, or convert into their, their nationality of? Because the Israelites was among them. Pay attention. From 1780, scattered into what? All nations. Running from what? Byzantium or the, the Eastern Roman Empire. You need to pay attention. They hide, seek refuge in what? All nations. Running from Roman persecution. Who was ruling by the team at that time? The Romans, the Eastern Roman Empire, Constantine V. You need to pay attention. They were all ruling Leo IV. They were all ruling at that time. So the Israelites were running, living with them. So they converted to who? Still, still had that, uh, your nationality. That's what they say. It's before, be, before and puzzling. Why they would do that? Be, because you understand, it's the outcasts like, taking their nationality to avoid persecution from the Muslims and the, and the Christians. This person is going to take their identity, but deeper than that. Pay attention. Because they understand you were cast out. Ishtaris, sorry, um, for it was customary among Turkish peoples to refer to the ruling classes or clans as white, to the lower strata as black. So that we see in the, this customary to the lower strata as black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ishtaris, Ishtar black skin cousins, as much as is, 
and his colleagues' writings were based on a hearsay and legend. I would have seen his hearsay. No, but the Jews were among them. Page 22. Some Arab and Arab chronicles provide an attractive combination of legend and gossip column. They may start with the creation and end with stop press tidbits. This Yakubi, a 9th century Arab historian, traces the origin of the Khazars back to Japheth, third son of Noah. The Japheth motive recurs frequently in the literature, while other legends connect them with Abraham or Alexander the Great. Some connect them with who? Alexander the Great. We need to pay attention. With who? Alexander the Great. The Greeks. The Greeks. They were still nominally under the suzerainty of the West Turkish Kingdom, within which they, pre they represented the strongest effective force and to which they were soon to succeed. According, accordingly, in 627, the Roman Emperor Heraclius concluded a military alliance with the Khazars, the first of several to follow in preparing his decisive campaign against Persia. The Khazars provided Heraclius with 40,000 horsemen under a chieftain named Zebel. So they were making alliances. The Roman Emperor of the East, or, Const or, or, or Constantinople, or Byzantium Empire, made a, a, a allegiance with the Khazars, this is Khazaria, to go and fight the Persians. It's what? Presumably, and what? But then, presumably fed up with the cautious strategy of the Greeks, turned back to lay siege in Tiflis. So the, that was the Greco-Roman Empire. Pay attention. The Eastern Roman Empire, or the Greco-Roman Empire, because they, con they, they absorbed the Greeks. They absorbed them into their nation. So when he had referred to them as Greeks and Roman Empire, pay attention. What Judas Maccabees was wearing against the Greeks, the Romans was there? Yes, they were there in power. Pay attention, taking out the Greeks. They were there, and the Greeks was there, and then they take, eventually they absorb the Greeks, take them out. The, of the first meeting between the Roman Emperor and the Khazarian chieftain, to the hostile League of Trostros with the Avars, the Roman Emperor, Emperor opposed the useful and honorable alliance of the Turks. At his liberal invitation, the horde of Khazars transported their tents from the plain of the Volga to the mountains of Georgia. So he's establishing where they are, where they are. Eudocia, or Epiphania, was the only daughter of Heraclius by his first wife. The promise to give up in marriage to the Turk indicates once more the high value set by the Byzantine court on the Khazar alliance. So who the Khazar? You call them what? Turks. You need to pay attention. Turks. You need to pay attention. What happened in, in, in the end of this year? Now the Musa is decimating it. You need to pay attention. Massive earthquake. Almost 50,000 people died. You need to pay attention. What happened in, in that land? In, in, in Kiev, all these places? You need to pay attention. These, all these places are being named here. Hell. The Musa is raining hell. The angels, Michael and the crew. You need to pay attention. The, the, the holy angels the, are decimating this four beast kingdom. They're wrapping it up. You need to pay attention. The end of an age. <laughs> we are in, in, in historical times. You need to pay attention. They form an alliance by what? Giving the, the Roman, give the daughter in, the Greco Roman, give the daughter in marriage to the, the Khazars. Or the Turks. They call them Turks. She given to Zibel. But however, the marriage came to naught because Zebel died while Idusia and her, and her suite were on their way to him. So she was on way and he died. So they never consummated the marriage. Read, um, in, the f in the first 20 years of the Hegira, Muhammad's flight to Medina in 622, with which the Arab calendar starts. The Muslims had conquered Persia, Syria, Mesopotamia, Egypt, and surrounded the Byzantine heartland the present-day Turkey, in a deadly semicircle, which extended from the Mediterranean to the Caucasus and the southern shores of the Caspian. The Caucasus was a formidable natural obstacle, but no more forbidden than the Pyrenees. So that's talking about the time of the Arab Crusades, the Arab conquest. 4,000 Arabs were killed, including the commander, in one of the sorties in 652, and the, the Arab Khazar War. They went against the Khazarians and they, they, some, they get put to death because they, they were the formidable force at that time. At the beginning of the 8th century, their state was sufficiently consolid, consolidated for the Khazars to take the offensive against the Arabs. From a distance, more than a thousand years, the period of in, intermittent warfare that followed the so called Second Arab War, 722 to 37. That's 80.
At one stage during these 15 years of fighting, the Khazars overran Georgia and Armenia, inflicting a total defeat on the Arab army in the Battle of Adabil, AD 70. The sign of the sigh of relief experienced in the Roman Empire assumed a tangible form through another dynastic alliance. When the heir to the throne was married to Khazar, a Khazar princess, whose son was to rule Byzantium as Leo the Khazar. You see that? So he could rule the Roman Empire as Leo the Fourth, Leo the Fourth the Khazar. The last Arab campaign was led by the was led by the future caliph Marwan the Second and ended in a pirate victory. Marwan made an offer of alliance to the Khazar Khagan, the king, then attacked by surprise through both passes. The Khazar army, unable to recover from the initial shock, retreated as far as the Volga. The Khagan was forced to ask for terms, the king, the king and the ruler, Marwan in accordance with the routine followed in other conquered countries, requested the Khagan's conversion to the true faith, to, is, to, the, to Islam. The Khagan complied, but his conversion to Islam must have been an act of lip service, for no more is heard of the episode in the Arab or Byzantine sources, in contrast to the lasting effects of the establishment of Judaism as the state religion. See that? So he tell him, yeah, you go convert. He never did. Because he won what? After Judaism. There's a reason behind it. Content with the results achieved, Marwan bid farewell to Kazari and March. So the, the Arabs leave. <laughs> he leave and they went back. They conquered them and they gone back where they had to go. During his exile to Kirsten, Justinian kept plotting to regain his throne. After three years, he saw his chances improving when, back in Byzantium, Leontius was dethroned and also had his nose cut off. So the, 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 the Romans were, were fighting against each other. As they were doing with the Caesar, back in the time of the Caesar, taking each other out. Power struggle. Justinian escaped from Chosen into the Khazar ruled tongue of Doros in the Crimea and had a meeting with the Khagan of the Khazars, King Busi of Basil. Of, of Basil. Here they made preparation for the invasion of Byzantium to go back and take the Roman Empire, Empire with the aid of Khazar armies, which King Busi had apparently promised. But the envoys of the new emperor, Tiberius III, persuaded Busi to change his mind by offering him a rich reward in gold if he delivered Justinian. You see that? It's only undermining and undercutting. You see that? They planning to come and overthrow him and he, he buy out the Khazarian Empire. Pay them more to bring him, to deliver him to them. So it's just, that's what they do. The devil is coming down to you. Pay attention. Pay attention. There's no loyalty. No loyalty. But... Uh, From page thirty-four, from the chronolo chronological point of view, the next enter sorry, the, from the chronological point of view, the next event to be discussed should be the conversion of the Khazars to Judaism around seven forty A.D. So around seven forty A.D. is when they converted. Why? We get of the life of these nomadic tribes. Convey sorry, the date of the expedition it will be noted is much later than the event described in the previous section. But as, for, as far as the custom and institution of the Khazar's pagan neighbors are concerned, this probably makes not much difference, and the glimpse we get of the life of these nomadic tribes convey at least some idea of what life among the Khazar may have been during that earlier period, before the conversion, when they adhered to a form of shamanism. Do you see that? They were what? In worshipping their shamanism. That was their religion. The conversion, chapter 2. The conversion. The, the conversion. The religion of the Hebrews, writes Berry, had exercised, had exercised a profound influence on the creed of Islam, and it has been a basis of Christianity. It had one scattered proselytes. So all of them offspring from Israelites, the, Israelite, the, the religion of God, Mosai, the laws of God, the nationality of the Israelites. It had one scattered proselytes, but the conversion of the Khazars to the undiluted religion of Jehovah of Yahawa is unique in history. At the beginning of the 8th century, the world was polarized between two superpowers representing Christianity and Islam. The ideological doctrines were welded to power politics, pursued by the classical methods of propaganda, subversion and military conquest. The Khazar, the Khazar Empire represented a third force which had proved equal to either of them. They were, stand, they were a formidable force, both as an adversary and an ally. But it could only maintain its independence by accepting neither Christianity nor, in, nor Islam. For either choice would have automatically sub subordinated it to the authority of the Roman Empire or the Caliph of Baghdad. So they had to give up. If they join any one of them, 
You have to give up authority, autonomy. The apparent logic of the decision to convert is of course due to the deceptive clarity of hindsight. In reality, the conversion to Judaism required an act of genius. It was an what? An act of genius. That we say is not simple, nothing simple. It's not as easy or as simple as people think. There can be no question that the ruler was actuated by political motives in adopting Judaism. To embrace Mohammedanism would have, been, would have made him the spiritual dependent of the caliphs who attempted, attempted to press their faith on the Khazars and in Christianity lay the danger of his, his becoming an ecclesiastical vassal of the Roman Empire. Judaism was a reputable religion, religion and sacred books which both Christian and Mohammedan respected. How did they get the sacred books and the religion? Because the Israelites were there amongst them and had the sacred books and religion. Your conquerors have your records. Pay attention. The heathen barbarians and secured him Sorry, it elevated him above the hidden barbarians and secured him against the interference of caliph and emperor. But he did not adopt along with circumcision the intolerance of the Jewish the word Jewish culture. You see, there we go again. Of the Jewish culture. They were interceding or interjecting themselves into the Israelites' night identity, stolen identity. Stolen identity. Through the continued influx of refugees from the religious religious persecution in Byzantium and to a lesser extent from countries in Asia Minor conquered by the Arabs. We know that Khazaria was a relatively civilized country among the barbarians of the north, yet not committed to either of the militant creeds, and so it became a natural haven for the periodic exodus of Jews under Byzantine rule. Pay attention. It became what? A natural haven or, or, or refuge, or place of refuge for the periodic exodus of Jews. The Israelites the true Israelites under Byzantine rule, under Roman rule. Pay attention. Conquered from 70 to now. So they were running where? In Khazaria hiding. Pay attention. The true Jews. Pay attention. To be a you now. We need to pay attention. Threatened by forced conversion and other pressures. So the Jews were good. The Israelites were carried away slaves from 70 AD and running. Running because they're forcing them. What was um, um, Antiochus and them doing? The same thing. <laughs> forcing them to convert and they were running. Who will run? Get put to death. So they were running to for refuge in all these places. Threatened by forced conversion and other pressures, persecution in, in varied forms had started with Justinian I, 527 to 565 AD, and assumed particularly vicious forms under Heraclius in the 7th century, persecuting the Israelites, pay attention. Leo III in the 8th century, persecuting the Israelites, pay attention. Basil and Leo IV in the 9th century, Romanus in the 10th century. Thus, Leo III, who ruled during the two decades immediately preceding the Khazar conversion to Judaism, Attempted, attempted to end the anomaly of the tolerated status of Jews at one blow by ordering all his Jewish subjects to be baptized. Order the implementation of the order seemed to have been rather ineffective. It led to the flight of a considerable number of Jews from Byzantium, Master Ulysses. It's not Jewish subjects to be baptized, but the Jews that were conquered in 780 and under the Roman dominion. They were forcing them to what? Convert and they were running. For some, they were running and hiding with the Khazars. The, the, the Khazars convert. So they were Jewish. But the real Jews were in, 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 in Byzantium and in Constantinople under the Roman, under these emperors. And they were running for secure into Khazaria. Pay attention. And the Khazarian convert is Jewish. <laughs> so you have to be mindful when you're reading. Because who's writing the book? You need to pay attention. Still creating confusion. But the most I said, true child spring out of the earth. In this city, Khazar, Aitil, and Muslims, Christians, Jews, and pagans. The Jews are the king, his attendants, and the Khazars of his kind. You see, that's another saying that the Jews, not Jewish. <laughs> the king of the, the Jews fled for succor under them, and they, they converted, the Khazars converted to Judaism, but they say the Jews, they call them the Jews now. The Jews are the king and his attendants and the Khazars of his kind. Pay attention. So they call themselves the Jews now. You need to pay attention. Where this thing happened? Where the stolen identity happen? The king of the Khazars had already become a Jew in the Caliphate of Rabbi. You see, he had become a Jew, convert. So how is he the Jew now? He's a convert. Pay attention. And he was joined by Jews from all over lands of Islam and from the country of the Greeks, where the Israelites were all over were running for succor and hiding there. Pay attention. 
they converted into nationality, but the real Jews are running from persecution from left, right, and they were hiding amongst them. They were a lot more tolerant of them. Pay attention. They wasn't persecuting them, they were tolerant of them, so they converted into they're like look how these people live in and they convert. To avoid going to Christianity or Islam. It wasn't a thing of morality. No, it was to preserve their race. Pay attention. And he was joined by Jews from all the lands of Israel. It's all for them by the Mosai. You need to pay attention. For the last days to show his power. I will come and reveal who they are. You need to pay attention. And what? And from Greeks, from the country of the Greeks. The country of the Greeks were Byzantium. They the, 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 the Greco Roman Empire, the same Roman Empire that the Romans absorbed, take the Greeks. So they called Greeks or Romans, Greek or Roman, Byzantium, which is Constantinople. That's the capital. Indeed, the king of the Greeks at the present time, or the king of the Roman, the year of the Hegira, 332 AD, sorry, the year Hegira, 332, which is AD 943, 944, has converted the Jews in his kingdom to Christianity by coercion. Forced, forced conversion of the Israelites who were captured from 70 AD and under Roman slavery. They were forcing them into, into converting to Christianity, called the Crusades, so they were running. That's why they were running, running to Caesarea and running to all these places for succor. Thus many Jews took flight from the country of the Greeks to Caesarea. They were running from, when they say the country of the Greeks, the Byzantine Empire, or the, the Roman Empire, Greco-Roman Empire. They run, for, run to Caesarea. They, conceived, they take it from the Greeks, so that the, the, or the Eastern Roman Empire, that's what they refer to the Greek, or Byzantine, the Eastern Roman Empire, not the Western Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire. You need to pay attention. Western Roman Empire was based in what? Italy. Pay attention. Thus many Jews, Italy and their allies, the allies conquered in this side, Thus many Jews took flight from the country of the Greeks to Caesarea. That's why they end up in the, these places. Pay attention. Why, that's why do you think they have a history, or history, all these artifacts all over? You need to pay attention. Because the real Jews are among them. You need to pay attention. And they understood this. How did they force them to convert? After refusing to accept their erroneous belief, was placed in an olive... Sorry. Sorry. How did they force them to convert? Anyone refusing to accept their erroneous belief or Christianity was placed in an olive mill under a wooden press. They were placed in a what? Where they press olive oil. Pay attention. Under a wooden press and squeezed in the way olives are squeezed in the mill. They were doing what? Putting them under olive press and squeezing them the way they press olive. What do we really read in Second Maccabees? Go to Second Maccabees 7. We read it earlier. Who was doing it? Antiochus Epiphanes. Second Maccabees 7. You need to pay attention. 2 Maccabees 7 and verse 15. Afterwards, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Ma they did what? Mangled him. Pay attention. They were what? They had all kind of torture instruments. Verse 3. The, then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forthwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first, and to cut off the utmost part of his body, and the rest of his virgin and his mother looked on. And now when he was thus maimed, in all his members, it cut off all the members. They were torturing them. You need to pay attention. So where's that coming from? Go back to the 13th tribe. Page 61. How anyone refusing to accept their erroneous belief, Christianity was placed in an olive mill under a wooden press and squeezed and in the way olives are squeezed in the mill. They what and they were put in they put them in quarters. I read it earlier. They put them in court they pulled them in quarters. I read it in verse. I read it earlier. Back to the way of the warrior. Page 30. The way of the warrior. Page. Page 32. Scalping appalled many Europeans. All the barbarities such as beheading, disemboweling, and drawing and quartering were common enough back home. They were what? Drawing and quartering. Pulling in pieces, pay attention, or drawing it like we're putting, putting it through what? These great presses and quartering four horses, one here, one here, one here, one here, and they pull it to pieces until they break apart in four pieces. Quarter, four quarters. You need to pay attention. The way is he saying here? Back to the Lord the 13 tribe, page 61. How did they force them to convert to Christianity? Anyone refusing to accept their erroneous belief in Christianity was placed in an olive mill under a wooden press. And squeezed in the way others are squeezed in the mill. Tortured, pay attention, pulling, <laughs> pulling apart, quartering, barbaric, barbarities. Um, they may have combined in their missionary efforts theological argument and messianic prophecies with a shrewd assessment 
of the political advantages the Khazars would derive from adopting a neutral religion. religion. The political what advantages from adopting a new religion? All of a sudden I become you know. I adopt your religion but I become you. You need to pay attention. The, the exiles also brought with them Byzantine acts. The who? The exiles or the outcasts of Israel. The Israelites running from the, for their life from conversion being pulled apart as we were reading. Who was doing it? The Greeks were doing the same thing to them. <laughs> the, um, Antiochus and they were running for their life. The same thing. But as the Romans doing the same thing, they were running for their lives. But they brought taught their crafts and their square Hebrew alphabet. They brought their language, the square what? Hebrew alphabet. So who have the Hebrew alphabet? The Hebrews. No, the converts. The Hebrews. So they're learning from who? The Hebrews who was hiding amongst them. Pay attention. Taking succor among them. We do not know what kind of script the Khazars used before that. You see that? They don't know what they used before that. Until the Hebrews brought the Hebrews up to them. Pay attention. The Khazars used the Hebrew alphabet. Um, from Khazaria, the Hebrew script seemed to have spread into neighboring countries. Thus, Chuslow, 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 sorry, just Chosen reports that inscriptions in a non Semitic language, or possibly in two different non Semitic languages, using Hebrew characters, were found in two gravestones from Panagoria and Patanit Pat Pat in Crimea. From Patanit in Crimea. They have not been deciphered yet. The Crimea was, as we have seen, intermittently under Khazar rule. The Crimea was, was, was under, at periodical times, under Khazar rule. So that's why the, the language was there, the Hebrew language they're finding there. Pay attention. But it also had an old established Jewish community, and the inscriptions may even predate the conversion. The inscription, why would the inscription predate the conversion? Because the true Israelites were there. You need to pay attention. So who was going to inscribe it? Because the true Israelites were scattered, running for their life. Pay attention. Room, room, room took them captive and they were running from the crusades. They were scattered in all these regions. Crimea, all of these regions. You need to pay attention. Some Hebrew letters, Shin and Sadei, T-S-A-D-E-I, also found their way into the Cyrillic alphabet. And furthermore, many Polish silver coins have been found. Polish coins, money dating from the 12th or 13th century, which bear Polish inscriptions in Hebrew lettering. It had Polish inscri inscription on the Polish money in Hebrew lettering. So who was there? The Hebrews. You need to pay attention. The Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrews. Example, Lezek, L-E-S-Z-E-K. Kroll, Polski. Lezek, King of Poland. It had the what? The King of Poland, Lezek. His, his coin, but Hebrew language lettering. Pay attention. Side by side, why? so why do you, do you understand why these people have all the images of these black people in these churches and these cathedrals and these in monuments? Pay attention, records, because the Hebrews were among them and they understood it. That's why they look at you a certain way. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. I recall one, one sister telling me, some one tell her, you're worshipping the wrong, <laughs> the wrong, you're in the wrong church. Pay attention. One of these Eastern European telling her, you're in the wrong church. You're worshipping the wrong God. You need to pay attention. <laughs> Christianity. You're worshipping the wrong God. You need to pay attention. Because these people understand. These Eastern Europeans, they understand who you are. They know who you are. The, the, the wise of them know who you are. Because they know what they're seeing in the churches. You need to pay attention. Scattered through the earth. These coins are the final evidence for the spreading of the Hebrew script from Khazaria. From, from Khazaria. You see the big Christian from Khazaria. The Israelites were there. You need to pay attention. Thus, while the conversion was no doubt inspired by opportunity, so by opportunistic motives, conceived as a cunning political maneuver, it was conceived as a what? Cunning political maneuver. It brought in its wake cultural development, which could hardly have been foreseen by those who started it. The Hebrew alphabet, alphabet was the beginning. Three centuries later, the decline of the Khazar state is marked by repeated outbreaks of Messianic Zionism, with pseudo messiahs like David Elroy. Hero of a novel by D. Israeli, leading quixotic crusades for the reconquest of Jerusalem. They start to lead what? Crusades for the what? Reconquest of Jerusalem. No, you convert a nationality and you lead a crusade to reconquer the land of where the, the Israelites were scattered from. Pay attention. Where the Israelites? Where, where, the most I say is going to be scattered in the four ways. I will gather them. But you lead a, you convert and lead a crusade 
to reconquer the land. So how we end up there in 1948? You need to pay attention. United Nations placed them there. Yeah, because they led crusades for the reconquest of Jerusalem to come and take it back from the Arabs that was occupying it. They were plotting a war until United Nations passed a resolution on the Balfour Declaration. After the defeat by the Arabs in 737, the Kagan's forced adoption of Islam had been a formality almost instantly revoked. So they never gave them the word and never kept it. They keep the Judaism. In contrast to this, the voluntary conversion to Judaism was, the, was to produce deep and lasting effects because they understood they were taking a nationality to attention. I am hiding <laughs> as you, staying off of the radar, away from Christianity, away from Islam. Pay attention because they look at the Israelites as more noble people. Um, Jewish rule in Khazaria. The Byzantine Empire forced the Jews to emigrate. These emigrants came to the Khazar country. They what? They forced them out of the Eastern European Empire. Forced them, the Eastern Roman Empire. They came to what? These immigrants or Israelites from the land of Canaan came to the Khazar country where they found an intelligent and uneducated race. They found an intelligent but uneducated race to whom they offered their religion. You see that? This is what he's saying. They found an intelligent but uneducated race and they offered their religion to them. You need to pay attention. The natives found it better than their own and accepted it. This is different accounts they get in of the historians who live in records. The reason for the conversion to Judaism of the king of the Khazars, who had previously been a pagan, is as follows. This is the account of what? al bakis the book of the kingdoms and the roads, 11th century. He had adopted Christianity, the Khazars, the Khazars. then he recognized its falsehood and discussed this matter, with great, which greatly worried him. With one of his officials, the latter said to him, O king, those in possession of the sacred scriptures fall into three groups. Summon them and ask them to state their case and then follow the one who is in possession of the truth. Who is in possession of what? The truth. So the law, the law, they adopted the laws. They adopted the laws. Pay attention. Pay attention. Read Daniel chapter 2 and verse Daniel 2 and 30. Daniel chapter 2 verse 30. Daniel 2 and 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I might, I am, I have more than any living. Daniel said, I have more wisdom than any man alive. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. So Daniel saying, the most I'm not going to reveal wisdom, but for what? Their sakes that shall make known the ones who will make known the understanding. The understanding to the king. Go to verse. Verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with Mary clay, when you see what iron mixed with Mary clay, this is talking about the beast, the fourth beast kingdom, the iron and clay mix, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. This fourth Roman beast kingdom, pay attention, they're going to what? Mingle themselves with the seed of men. Hide in between the nations, mingle themselves, morph themselves, change the nationality, change identities, steal identities, pay attention to hide who they are. You need to pay attention. <laughs> they shall what? Mingle themselves. This is the, 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 my, the iron and clay make portion of the Roman beast kingdom, the fourth beast kingdom, the fourth beast. Mingle themselves with the seed of men, with all these nations. Pay attention. Mingling. Hiding who they are. <laughs> you need to pay attention. They're going to hide. Hide. And what's going to happen? And in those days, the, the, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So the Mosai is about to take them out. Take them all out. Hebrews 5 and 12. The Mosai is taking them all out. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Hebrews 5 and 12. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teacher again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, is our predestination or ordination of, from the Most High God. The sanctioned wisdom, the wisdom that being revealed, or the, the, the hidden secrets, is what oracles of God being revealed to the saints, for the, to the saints. Pay attention. I'm going to send men to reveal it in the last time. Go who will train who the devil is. The devil is down there. Who the devil is? First Peter 4 and 11. First Peter 4 and 11. First Peter 4 and verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. As what? 
you are predestined or ordained by the Most High God or sanctioned by the Most High God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God gave it. That's, that's what we're talking about when you talk about the oracles of God. Because they're going to utter things that was kept secret from the foundation of the earth. <laughs> Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Romans chapter 3 verse 1. Romans 3 and 1. What advantage then had the Jew, the Israelites, or what profit is their circumcision, keeping the law? Much every way, chiefly because unto them, the Israelites, were given the, were committed the oracles of God. This is heavenly ordination. Pay attention. They could steal their identity. They could pretend they're you. They could do what they want. But the Most High will both reveal it in the end. Because the devil is coming to you, the Most High says, I'm going to show you who the devil is. Pay attention. Because I sent them, I made my creation. The oracles of the mystery is going to be revealed. Go and reveal it. Pay attention. For what if some did not believe? Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? What if you don't believe? God forbid, let God be true and every man a liar. If you don't believe, do the Most High say what? Let God be true, Paul said, let you be a liar. Thus said the Lord, the word of God will win out. Pay attention. And you read in the book, and you read in the book. This book has all this, the history of the Israelites. Pay attention. They are God's people, and will always be God's people. And because the Ahusha Mashiach is coming, we're shutting the beast kingdom down to establish us back to rulership. Acts 7 and 38. Back to the law and order. Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Acts 7 and 38. This is he that which was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spoke to him in the Mount Sinai and Moses with our fathers who received the lively oracle to give unto us. He received what? The lively oracles or the law or the instruction of the Most High God or the mysteries or, or the, the precepts. Go and give them. Go and show them what I'm talking about. The mysteries. The hidden wisdom of God. Go and read the lively oracles. Go to 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and read verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the, of the prudent, the devil that hiding between you. Pay attention. That masquerading and stealing identity, you will bring to not, nothing the wisdom of the wise. His worldly wisdom. Pay attention. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? The who? The disputer of this world. Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. By the their own understanding, you see that we own accolades, we own, we own academia, they knew not God. They still not keeping God's laws. They're not cheering of God. They're cheering of Satan. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. This way you're witnessing right now. The Most High God is pleasing to the Most High God by the foolishness of preaching. Because they say what? You, you say, you, you, or they're just reading the book, or they're just doing this, or they're just doing that. Here, yeah, pay attention. It's the foolishness of preaching by the Most High is bringing what? The wisdom of this world to not. Pay attention. The devil is coming to you that's revealing. The devil, who is the devil? Who is ruling? This is his kingdom. This is Satan's kingdom. Satan and his children are dominating the children of Israel. You Israelites. For violating your, 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 law, your laws. To violate, for violating your God. So the Most High bringing what? By the foolishness of preaching, repent and come back to the laws. Forsake your sins, come back to the laws to save them that believe. You're going to get saved. Pay attention. Or salvation, because the salvation is very nice. <laughs> this beast kingdom is being cut down right now in your presence. You need to pay attention. Spiritual things is happening and you don't even understand. The Most High is wrapping up. This age is being wrapped up, quickly wrapped up. Pay attention. Look at the massive earthquake, you need to pay attention. The tsunamis, they pay attention. Fire. The most like plague in this earth. Plague because he's about to destroy it. Plague in this earth. Pay attention. They're about to burn it. You need to pay attention. You are going, what? But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The Israelites, they pay attention. The children of the, the, the of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the children of God. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confirm all things which are the children of the captivity. The most like good to confirm the things that are bring down the mighty powers that are ruling over them. Better than the children of the devil or the children of Satan that are ruling over them. And the base things of the world and things which are despised or hated of all nations or rejected had God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are to take down this beast kingdom. Top of them by the foolishness of preaching. Pay attention. By the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. <laughs> you need to pay attention. Go and say, Thus said the Lord, whether they hear what whether they forbear. Go to Psalms 83. Psalms 83 and verse 1. Psalms 83 and 1. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies, God has enemies, make a tumult and angry gathering. And they that hate thee, they are haters of God. Pay attention, these rulers of these kingdoms are haters of God. I have lifted up their head, they become prideful and arrogant and lofty. Pay attention. For look for what? They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken what? Crafty counsel against the Israelites. And consulted against the hidden ones. On one consent. They are all in collusion. They all know who you are, you Israelites. And this is a big secret. That's their secret. Pay attention. 
They have your records, they have your history, they have our scrolls, they know exactly who you are. Pay attention, because they conquered you from 780 to now. They conquered you. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us do what? Cut them off because the many of the Israelites we just read, they take Sikor in this in this area, and guess what? They take your nationality, they learn your laws, and you, all of a sudden you don't exist no more. All of a sudden, I am you. Is it crafty council? They have taken what? Crafty council. They have said that let's cut them off from being a nation. They don't know who they are. Discontinue the heritage. Discontinue and I am you now. That the name of Israel may be known in remembrance. I am you now. Pay attention. I am an ish like you. <laughs> but who are you? You don't exist. Pay attention. For they have consulted together with one consent. You said United Nation, united in one consent. They have confederate against thee. They are in all in one consent. They know who you are. The tabernacles or the what? The tabernacles or the houses. The definition of the tabernacles are houses. Pay attention. Of Edom. All the seed of Edom. The red people on the earth. Pay attention. The tabernacles of Edom. All the red men on the earth. You need to pay attention. <laughs> the red men on the earth. The tabernacles or the houses. Means the family or the lineage. The, the, go to Genesis 25. 30. The red men on the earth. Genesis. He saw us for. Give me what I pray thee. And Esau said to Jacob, I pray thee, feed me with that same red pottage, the red man on the earth, for I am faint. Therefore, he was his name called Edom, meaning red. The red man on the earth means his blood show for three skin. Edom, Esau. Go to Genesis 32 and 1 to 3. Genesis 32, 1 to 3. And Jacob went his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host, God's army. And called the name of that place Mahanam Naim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Red men, pay attention. Brother, show for true skin. Genesis 36 and 43. Genesis 36 and verse 43. Duke Magdiel. This is what the generation of Esau. Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These be the dukes of Edom according to their habitation in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. The who? The father of the Edomites. Esau. Verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom, the red man. Pay attention. Or the houses of Esau. Esau is Edom and his progeny. Pay attention. That's what the two, back to Psalm 83, the tabernacles of Edom. Pay attention. The tabernacles of Edom. First Samuel 15 and, and 3. 1 Samuel 15 and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that he have. This was the commandment the Most High gave to Saul. Go and destroy us, Amalek and take off all that he have. Kill all that he have. Why? Because Amalek was one of the grandsons of Esau. That's Zepho's son. Pay attention. The tabernacles of Esau that come back and torment me behind you. Pay attention. The Most High tell all the, the, the devil has come down. He's trying to tell all the cut up bloodline. Cut the bloodline. There's something that you need to pay attention. Something's going to happen. And King Saul didn't listen. That when the most I carried him, put him, put him to death. Pay attention. Because why Psalm 83? The tabernacles of Edom, the houses of Edom, Esau progeny, going to come and torment him behind in the end. You need to pay attention. Dear what? From Antiochus come, Alexander the Greek come, you need to pay attention. The will really come, decimate you, put him into captivity. Sack the, the temple, decimate this and bring the, the, the abomination and make it desolate. Worshipping, pay attention, worshipping idols in the Mosaic temple, prostitution, um, um, defiled foods, pay attention, every sin. What did the Romans come and do? Same thing, decimate the temple, steal the, 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 everything from the temple, pay attention, decimate it and defile it. Pay attention. That's what the Mosaic tell you, cut that seed. The tabernacles of Edom, Edom, all the houses that you, it progeny, and the Ishmaelite, you pay attention. The children of the, the Ishmaelite, that's the son of Abraham, true Hagar, pay attention. Of the Moab, Moab, the Hagarines, Gebal, Ammon, and Amalek. And who? Amalek, 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 pay attention. That way you say one put Amalek to death. Pay attention. That was tell King Saul. Cut off that bloodline, which is um, Z4 son. Esau grandson. Cut him off that progeny or that what they're gonna come against you. Pay attention. They will come against you. In Japan, the most like that's all is hitless. He tell you all of them what he did to them. Who said, Let us take the, to ourselves the houses of God in our possession, northern kingdom, southern kingdom, Judah, Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, the conquer behind from Sentinel and have we hidden <laughs> in, in plain sight? Pay attention, take your nationality, take your identity. They take into possession the houses of God, the Israelites. That's a conspiracy, the crafty council. 
The most I can do what? As the fire burned of wood, and as the flame set the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy sword. Bring judgment. What's happening on the earth right now? The most I persecuting these people are taking the children of Israel into possession. He's wrapping up this weak kingdom. Pay attention. And culminating the, this age. <laughs> judging them. Judging them. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. And let them be put to shame and perish. But they put their, fill their faces with shame that, uh, that they may seek thy name. He said, Musa, he said, bring them to their knees. Bring them to their knees. Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. For I will give you a mountain wisdom which all the adversaries shall not be able to gain. Say, no, is this. Yahushua Mashiach say, I will, I will give you a mountain wisdom which none of your adversaries, your enemies, or the devil will be able to get gain. Say, none of them can gain. Say, pay attention because I revealed things that were kept secret from the foundation of the earth. Pay, pay attention. Go to uh, Matthew 10 and verse 26. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Matthew 10, verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Nothing that's what? Covered the done in secret and hiding in the down low that will not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Nothing that they hide in, pay attention, I will make it known. Yeah, which I said, I reveal in it. What I tell you in darkness, what I reveal unto you in your dreams, that speak in the light. And what you hear in the air, that preach in the house of. Go and teach it. Go and teach it, brave and bold. Go and teach. And fear not them which kill the body. Don't fear them that kill the body. This is flesh. <laughs> but the Maccabees brother said, don't worry about that. This is, you do what you got to do. But fear, rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear the most high. That we say, you fear the most high. Keep them laws. Go and do what you got to do. What? Whosoever therefore, which, who de, whosoever, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Who going to say, thus said the Lord, whether they hear, whether they forbear. Who going to teach, thus said the Lord, or reveal what I show them in darkness, I will confess to the Most High. He put in the work, bring him home. You need to pay attention. <laughs> He's worthy to join your army. Pay attention. Isaiah 58 and 1. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud. Pay not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people the transgression and the house of Jacob is sin. The most I say, Israel, you go and cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Lord, speak brave and bold. Go and confess the Yahushua before the world. Confess the most I God laws before his world, his marvelous work. Before the world, go and tell them, you see that you're the Israelites. Repent and return to the laws of your God because you're worshipping the devil in this hell. The devil has come down to you. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. Satan, you in Satan's kingdom. Satan's children are dominion, dominating you. Satan and his fallen angels and his children are dominating you and punishing you for violating the laws of your God. So cry out and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet loud and show my people, the Israelites, their transgression. That's how we offended the Most High God. Pay attention and have Satan's children ruling over you. You know it's a sin. Repent and return to your Lord. Second Ezra 1 and 5. Second Ezra chapter 1 verse 5. Go thy way and show my people their sinful deeds and their children their wickedness which they have done against me, that they may tell their children's children. Most I say what? Go and show them their wicked deeds, their sinful deeds. Pay attention, the Israelites. Go and tell them they miss a sin, worshiping Satan. They still are not listening to me. They still not listening to me. Tobit chapter 13 and verse 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is about to establish, for he had scourged. He what? He doth scourge. The Most I scourge and trust in our behind from 70 and now. And had mercy, he will have mercy to who we fear him and who return to the laws. He led it down to hell. He led it to where? We are in hell. We are kept in captivity or conquered. According to Isaiah 5 and 11, captivity is hell. We are conquered from 78 to now. He pay attention. We fell from the laws of God. Most I say degenerate, degenerate into hell. Pay attention. All the captivities is hell. Because they're not obeying the laws of God. And what? And bring it up again. He will what? De deliver us or give us salvation once you return to them, Lord. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. None can avoid his hand as we didn't avoid his hand from 17 to now. Pay attention from Adam fall to now. None of us avoid his hand. The most say what? But he will what? Bring up. And he, none who he oppressors couldn't avoid his hand the same way because he have to decimate the beasts that are put to dominate you or the beast kingdoms that are put to dominate you or the devil, the train of the devil that are put on the beast kingdoms to dominate you. They have to taste my hand too. <laughs> you taste my hand. I use them as my hand to smack you, but guess what? I had to give them, give them my hand, which is my holy angel, my host, my army coming to smack them. Confess him before the Gentiles. Do what? Go and testify him openly before the Gentiles. He's hidden. You children of Israel, the Israelites, pay attention, they are here. We are still here. Pay attention. Hidden in plain sight, being revealed in the last days because the mystery of God is about to be wrapped up, up to be revealed. 
For he had scattered us among them. He had scattered us among the heathen. Pay attention. That way you say that Matthew 20, 19, go there from teach all nations. Where the most has scattered us among all nations. There declare his greatness. Do on what? Declare his greatness and extol him before all the living. All the heathen on the earth, all the living on this earth. You're going to say, Thus said the Lord. For he is our Lord. And he is the God of our Father forever. The Most High will not forsake his people. Have God forsaken his people? No. He said what? I with them forever. And I will just, he, will, he will scourge us for our iniquities. We are being scourged for sins for violating his law. And will have mercy again when we return to them laws. And will gather us out of all nations. Among whom he has scattered us. That we say, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Take pay attention. And this devil teaching in them for Sunday pagan worship. He's teaching all people. You see, he said, teach all nations. He's the God of all people. No, he's coming for the Israelites. He's scattered into all nations where he scattered us behind. And we hide. They hide in our identity. Pay attention. Deuteronomy 4 and 27. Deuteronomy 4 and 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whether the Lord shall scatter you, the Israelites. Scattered among the heathen. Pay attention. Conquered this stolen identity, stolen nationality, and see you no more. Crafty council, Psalm 83. That's the most I had, the hit list. You need to pay attention. Who's on the head of the hit list? The tabernacles of Edom. Pay attention. Amalek, the tabernacles of Edom. You need to pay attention. Top of the hit list. The houses of Edom. The children of Edom or Esau. Pay attention. The red men on the earth with the blood show forth through their skin. They are the sword of the Lord. Psalm 17, 13. That punishing you behind. Satan and his children. Psalm 17, 13. Arise, O Lord, and disappoint him. Cast him down. They will say, cast him down from domin dominating or ruling the children and punishing us. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. They are the wicked of the earth, or the sword of the Lord. You need to pay attention. From men, which are thy hand. They are the hand of the Lord, or the wicked of the Lord, the sword of the Lord. You need to pay attention. From men of the world, which have their portion in this life. This is their life. This is their he heaven. Whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. That's why they filthy rich. They take all our wealth. Pay attention. Because that's a reward for punishing us. Pay attention for our violating our God. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substances to their babes. They pass on inheritance, inheritance, inheritance. That's the heathen nations. Pay attention. The devil has come down. You pay attention. We read and we understood from the fall of the children of Israel going into sin. The most I use Satan to punish our behind. Satan and his children. Pay attention. So you're in Satan's hell. You <laughs> pay attention. Your hell is all right hell. That Satan has dominion here in this hell. That's their Dear heaven, which is to hell to us, the children of Israel. I pray you get some understanding from today's class that you must repent and return to the laws of your God, you Israelites. Shalom.